Uh, uh, welcome to Game of Thrones Book Club. I'm James. I'm James. I'm Chelsea. I'm Joel. And this is, once again, Game of Thrones Book Club, where we meet every week to discuss about 70 pages of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire series. We are still on Game of Thrones, because we've had to take some weeks off, like last week, where we were at Disneyland. But we're here now, and I think we'll be here for the next couple of weeks, uh, consistently, as far as I know. Are you, you're not going to take... You're good. You're, I think you're we're good. You booked a flight to come back. This guy's got a wedding in a couple of weeks, and we're going, yeah. obviously, because we're, we're friends. I'll be in New York beginning of October. Okay, so but as far as like having a live stream goes, it'll we'll, we'll have Chelsea one. and I will get back. Someday. Oh, that Sunday? Yeah. Oh yeah. Can I, make it no, I won't be. Okay, so uh, there will be a Sunday coming yeah. up where it's Chelsea and I, and hopefully Liz or someone. Yeah, else. Yeah, new exciting guests. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, if you missed it, was an awesome day for the channel. We did another live stream. It was Game of Thrones Clue. We got copies of the game Game of Thrones Clue from USAopoly, the people who made it, and we cosplay played it. I was Littlefinger. That's why I have this shitty mustache still. Um, yeah, you look like a cop. Yeah, I was driving around with aviators on earlier. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? You had the aviators like on your shirt, yeah, and it really completed shirt. the look. Chelsea was Cersei. Uh, Caitlin Postal, going postal in the chat, if she's still there, was our Sansa Stark, who I had a lot of fun with. <laughs> Brianna <laughs> Rokes was our Marjorie, and Mark Sandoval was our Oberyn Martell. Got it right this time. No one heard the wrong one. Yeah. Audio issues. <laughs> Joel was our Maester of Ceremonies, MC Joel, and Gressel directed the hell out of it. We had five cameras, guys. He was clicking all over the place. So if you missed it yesterday, hope you didn't, but if you did, it's going to live on our channel in perpetuity in uh, in this universe and all others. Yeah. Also, oh, can language. I just say that I won? Oh yeah, Chelsea won. And with I'm the celebrating. Most move. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm That's celebrating my with my yeah. with my new shirt today. Oh yes, damn it feels I'm really happy. That's a cool with one. With this shirt. I let so many people down. We had a thing where you had to guess who was going to win and if you got it right, you would have a chance to win a game. So many people said me because I was so cocksure the whole time. I let him down. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a really good time. I'm really happy with the technical side of everything. Joel did a great job hosting. Everything went really well. Yeah, we had we had we still had audio issues. <laughs> yeah, of course, there's someone said it wouldn't be us without. Which yes, is not great. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it's actually only an hour and a half. So if yeah. you stick around for our, all of these book uh, book club live streams, it'll be like nothing to you. It's a half a book club. Yeah. <laughs> God, no kidding. <laughs> Uh, it probably was oh, Caitlin is one. there. Hey, Caitlin. Oh, hey, Caitlin. Oh, Caitlin, look what I have. Yeah, Caitlin, we have your lemon cake. You oh, left your lemon cakes here, and I'm going to eat them. Yeah, I'll definitely I eat think one earlier, too. Uh, so, yeah, this the reading for this week, I felt, uh, was mostly plot, right? It was plot. Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot uh, of Lucy. meat, really, to pick off these bones, I felt. I, I mean... I don't think I rushed through it because I still finished with plenty of time before book club, but like, I didn't feel like there was a lot going on. Yeah, I was doing my reading and like, what are we going to talk about besides just what happened on the surface? But I think once we start digging, we'll find some gold. Uh, there weren't a lot of chapters, and There's I feel like one major thing, obviously. Tower of Joy. Yeah, yeah. Tower oh, yeah. of Joy. We'll get to that at the end, but I guess. I feel like. Without further ado, we could just get started. Is that right? Anything else we need to address? Anything I else? would like Joel to talk real quick. Just to double. Well, it's me, Joel. Hello, I'm talking. How's my level, Russell? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And we do have a, an entire pot of coffee here oh, for today. Oh, I didn't get a cup. Oh, get no. Oh. Cup wench. <laughs> Just kidding. Erica, is there any way we could get a I mug? I didn't say that. I, uh, I didn't either. <laughs> what? Joel needs a mug? Joel needs a mug. mug. Thanks. Sorry. Let's jump into it, shall we? Yeah. With uh, Catlin 6. There's a lot of stuff here I really like. Yes, I'm excited. There is a lot of just like cool stuff in here. I yeah. wish we could, um, and I should have thought of this before we started streaming, but. Yeah, mug? Oh, hey, perfect. Tully mug, mug for Tully the mug. Catlin chapter. Um, I really thought it'd be helpful to bring up a picture of oh, what. Sigil, sorry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah we do. That, thank you for Oh, yeah, sorry, because we, do we don't have Before we get into it. Yeah, our sigil today comes from the Jenna Pearl, who's always on the channel. I love. Uh, I'm sad we don't have the TV today. Yeah, this is leftover from our Game of, Thru this is Game of Thrones clear. Clue uh, set. I like this set though. Uh, leave a comment in the chat. Well, why don't we just like? put this set behind the TV? 
the TV's low and it's mostly behind me and James. And we yeah, always I feel have like to do this awkward thing. Like the TV doesn't add much. Yeah. Now yeah. that we can do, now that we figured out how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Let oh, yeah. us know. But like it's with it over our faces. Yeah, Joel and Chelsea oh. do your presentation of the sigil. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I could do. Oh. Oh. Oh, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just let us leave it up there. I'm not going. I'm not going. No, no, make it a little smaller and let live up there. What else is going on up there? It's our sigil of the day. There. It can be above me. Oh, hey, maybe I can do can this. Can you mess with opacity? <laughs> what if I do this, too? Oh, what, oh we're just, uh, we're messing around here. Oh, I think you're getting too into too it. Too much? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We'll play with that when we're not live. Can you mess with uh, opacity? Uh, with that setting I don't tone? think so. Okay, cool. Mm. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Uh, this, is, good. this is how I'm happy now. that this is above me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Catlin six. Catlin six. Catlin six. Oh wait, Chelsea, what were you gonna say? A picture of what? Oh, yeah, sorry. I thought it would be useful, and maybe I could find something really quick. A picture of what the area looks like in the books. I thought of and that. How, oh, and yeah, what how, and what the journey. The show. Yeah, and what the journey up looks like, because I think the descriptions can maybe get a little confusing, especially if you don't quite know. Like a winch is an elevator, basically. Mm. That they also, pull you up no, in it, but you know. Is it in this chapter or Tyrion's chapter? It's in Tyrion's the chapter. Door. The moon door is very different. The moon different. door in the books is not in the floor, like it is Which, in the show. It's just a, it's just a show. Like, that's that's show, show Yuri. I'm just, I'm wondering if there's fan art of like the journey up. Is there one but, from like oh, the world go. book? The Seven Towers. That's this book. Oh, but they should be closer, like quivers yeah. and an arrow. That's arrow. Right. Uh, I probably said that wrong. Arrows in a quiver. Arrows in a quiver. There we go. That makes much more sense. This is from Wiki of Ice and Fire. All right, let's get let's Whatever. get back to it. Okay. All right. So, sorry, a lot of distractions today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been quite a weekend. Yeah. Okay, quite, so quite uh, Catelyn six. Uh, Catelyn arrives at the Vale with Donald Wainwood. He's a knight, and she just recounts a little bit. I, I like that we have the one attack told to us in detail as it happened. But then in this chapter, we learned there was a second attack and we just learn about it just briefly, like not even any details, just there was a second and it killed a bunch of them. And so there's only a few of them who made it mm -hmm. there. And then uh, Catelyn is accompanied by the Blackfish mm. from the Bloody Gate to the Gates of the Moon. Bloody Gate is the, the entrance to the Vale. Mm -hmm. So they make it to the Vale where the Blackfish is hanging out because he's the Knight of the Gate. And then he accompanies them to the Gates of the Moon, which is kind of, what, the gate into the Eyrie? I, yeah, I guess you could call it that. It's a, it's its own castle, because Nestor Royce is the lord of the Gates of the Moon. Yeah, and it's it's at the foot of uh, the Eyrie's mountain, right? Right. Uh, the Giant's Lance, I yes. believe. So they're, they're at the Gates of the Moon, and then they travel, she travels up with Maya Stone through Stone, Snow, and Sky, the different castles. And finally, she winches up and sees... Lysa! Lysa! That'll be the one time I make that joke. I do hope so. Okay. Joel. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were going to talk about Danny, so. Yeah, I'm Well, I mean, we'll all talk about all of it, but. We'll talk about Say it. not a word about Kevin. The Bloody Gate reminds me of, and I'm, I'm going to, it's the, the pass in the story of like 300, the Spartans versus. Oh, Thermopylae? Totally. Exactly. Uh -huh. That's exactly what I thought of, mm -hmm. and I wonder if that was an inspiration. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. Like, the way that it's described, it, it, when, she, when she says, like, how many armies broke themselves in the Age of Heroes mm -hmm. at the Bloody Gate. Right, like, it's all very legendary. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, this passage, that, that, that bit where she talks about the Age of Heroes made me wonder, like, is the Age of Heroes really that long ago? Like, is that, like, yeah. known? Oh, no, no it's, very it's really long oh, ago. Oh, no, it's really long ago, but, like, they, they're is not it inflated at all, or is it yeah. actually? It actually, because that's, that's what I, I just wondered. This they, I've always believed that, but, like, this time, I was like, maybe it's... Yeah, like, modern Westeros, quote-unquote, they're not, it's like King Arthur. It's like, do we know, like, was he real? Do, like, were those people... was 8,000 years It was a ago. long time ago for them, well, I, I think. I thought it was 3,000. It was Did long, it was... Winterfell and... and and the wall, 8,000? No. That's too long. That, I think that's too long. I think it's 3,000. It was long enough ago for them to not be unsure if some of these people actually existed. Definitely. definitely. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like King Arthur-esque. I think it's a good analogy. Sure. Even though that was only, what, 2,000 years ago? 1,000 years ago? Not even. It'd be like eight. 
Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like 1,200 years ago, maybe. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, the description of the Vale? Vale sounds like a really nice place. I love the description of the Vale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's very, like, very yeah. picturesque. In this... Picturesque. Picturesque? 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 Yeah. What, what, there's a difference between those two words. No, I've nope, never one of them is not a word. That's the difference. <laughs> picturesque and picaresque, yeah. Picaresque isn't a word. I'll I show think, you the spellings. I okay. think it's the pronunciation. Picaresque is a word, but that's not yeah. the word you're trying to I say. I just yeah. feel like the veil is so set up throughout the series to just be demolished at some point. I completely they agree. They keep saying oh. it's impregnable, it's impregnable. Yep. Look how beautiful it is. Look how untouched and awesome it is. And no. all there's all these yeah. pumpkins. You know how it was taken previously. Dragons. With the dragon. Dragons. Dragons are coming for the veil at some yeah. point. A dragon, what, landed on top of the Eerie, and uh, the, was it Aegon, I'm pretty sure? Like, no, had, it had was, the person's son. No, it was son. Uh, one of the sisters. Oh, okay. Visenya, maybe? I want to say Visenya. Yeah, yeah, yeah she, right. she had the uh, like, one of the Eerie's son lady. hanging out, and mm -hmm. was just like, hey, here's your son. You want to, like, <laughs> you want to submit to us now? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that from a world of Ice and Fire? Yes. Highly recommend. World Picaresque Western. is a word. Thank you, okay, Sarah. Okay, sorry. I didn't Thank know. Thank you, Sarah. That's totally my bad. But yeah, I think a lot of the times when I think of the Vale, I just think of the Eerie, and I just think of this mountain, this cold, mm -hmm. hard mountain. But no, yeah. this description of the Vale makes me realize that it's a much larger region with, uh, you know, rich black soil. We got rivers and lakes and f sweet fruit. I imagine That's when great. you enter the Vale, it immediately just goes down. Yes. Yeah. And it's like a it big valley. Up. Yeah. yeah. It'd be beautiful. I would love to see yeah. that. Yeah. And there are so many more, like, noble houses in the Vale that you realize, because you really only hear about, like, like to this point in the story, we've heard about, like, the Royces and the Aarons. Yeah. You know, like, there's so many more, and the Knights of the Vale are such a big deal, and now we're starting to realize that. Um, when, in, I think it's in this chapter where, I, it might be Sir uh, Wanwood, who's Sir, Sir Donald, who says uh, that Lysa has called all the Knights in close yeah. um, to keep them all close to her. And that's something that's going to be really important as things progress, that there's this massive untouched army in this massive untouched place. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling, Joel? Good. I'm, I'm feeling uh, pretty happy with this chapter. I, I really enjoyed the description also of the place. And I, it made me really wonder for how impractical it is to get up to the Eerie, how it was ever built. That's mostly what I thought. Mm -hmm. I can't figure time. that out either. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those, yeah. How do you get up there and build that build castle? castle. <laughs> yeah. Slaves. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I would imagine that it was originally, like, carved into the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Like, like Casterly Rock or something. something. And the towers kind of were carved away. Yeah, and then built on top of it. Um, yeah. We are right. introduced to the Blackfish in this chapter. Yeah. No, yes. This was crazy as a show watcher because we meet him for the first time in season three. Yeah. And here is he is far, at the man? Eerie. Yeah. Yeah, it's the arrow at shooting. Hoster's, yeah, uh, yeah. Hoster's funeral. And suddenly, here's the Blackfish, this cool guy in season six <laughs> of the show. And he's already here. Mm -hmm. Blew my mind. I mean, yeah. I'm so excited in, about the Blackfish. In like mm -hmm. a significant part. It's not just oh, yeah. like mentioned. He's here. Yeah. He has a scene with Catelyn. Like his he, role is Knight yeah. of the Gate. And we get his whole backstory and the reasoning about why he's called the Blackfish, mm -hmm. which I don't know if the show ever delved into. I think they not just called him the Blackfish. But yeah, yeah because uh, what his brother called him the Black Goat of the Tully Flock. Mm -hmm. And Bren Brendan was like, well, since we're fish, I'll be the Blackfish. Took it as a sigil. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about Blackfish for a second. Sure. Because the I think we find, a, find out later that part of the reason that he left and he had such a contentious relationship with Hoster is because Hoster kept trying to marry him. Yeah. And he always mm -hmm. refused. Yeah, we haven't learned that quite yet. It's um, like, we can't marry each other. We're brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you meant marry him off. That yeah. was a syntax so, joke. That was a syntax joke. <laughs> Good work. Yeah. Uh, but we get this passage where he says, Nevertheless, during all those years of Catelyn's girlhood, it had been Brendan the Blackfish to whom Lord Hoster's children had run with their tears and their tales when father was too busy and mother too ill. Catelyn, Liza, Edmer, and yes, even Peter Baelish, yeah. their father's ward, had listened to them all patiently as he listened now, laughing at their triumphs and sympathizing with their childish mis 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 misfortunes. So... Brendan good with children, mm -hmm. didn't have any problem with them. I think this is further support that Brendan's a gay character. 
Oh, I okay. could see that. I've yeah, heard that having before. Having never married, refused to marry. But having no problem with children. Oh, so you're saying, yeah, it wasn't like, I don't want to get married because I can't stand kids. Yeah, or like, and, I'm he, not a family, and he's yeah. not like, and he's not like, uh, off adventuring and everything. Like, he's he's supporting Liza. He's the knight of a gate, which is the equivalent of like a desk job for a knight. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, especially at the Erie in this time period. And uh, so I think, I think Brendan's like a high profile gay character. Are there ever any rumors about him as there are about other characters who we see who are gay? I don't. Well, I don't know if we get it as explicit, but I, I really think that that it's pretty much. I think it's said without being said. Like, there's a lot of evidence as to like why he's he's a tough enough character where he kind of stands up for himself. He never, you know, he never gives in the way that Renly does um, mm -hmm. to mar being mm -hmm. married off because okay, he doesn't yeah. really need to. You know, so. I don't know. It's definitely a popular theory, and I, I don't know if we'll ever get confirmation either way. It could just be one of those things. Like, I mean, there are plenty of historical figures where sure. you look at the evidence, and you're like, they could have just been gay. Sure. And just mm -hmm. like, you know. Who, which president? Buchanan. Buchanan. Yeah. Because he was the bachelor president, and then he also had, That's like, great. a very close dude friend. And, like, when that guy died, he wrote about how, like, his heart was forever broken. Mm -hmm. So... Interesting. Yeah. I knew you would know. <laughs> Got <right>. you. <laughs> um, also, uh, from that passage you read, Mother Too Ill? Yeah. I don't recall this. We get a few uh, we get a few mentions, I think, throughout Catelyn's POV chapters that their mother died young of illness. Okay. Um, and that's part of the reason why Cat is so close to Hoster, or was so close to Hoster. And Brendan. And Brendan. Yeah. Um, so... And, and part of the reason I think that uh, um, her relationship with Liza is one of more motherly, I think, than sisterly. Because she's she, five she, years older. Yeah, and I That's think she's very pro protective of Liza and, and views her. I think their relationship is complicated, and I think that's something that frustrates Kat. And I think we get that a lot in this chapter. Uh, Charles, I thought... Oh, well, this is, I mean, this is, oh, well, we're talking about Liza now, so it's fine. I was going to say that Liza, so we get this, this description of the Eerie and, like, how insanely long it takes to get up there. And then when they do get up there, the description of it is it is so cold and it's kind of small, like the castle's small by other castle standards. Mm -hmm. And Liza, already prone to mental illness, like, this is, like, the worst possible place for her to be I think oh you okay. know yeah I didn't think about that. she's so isolated and just surrounded by the same group of people every single day mm -hmm. I just think it it just adds a lot to like how she's totally gone off the rails although it sounds as though being in King's Landing didn't help her much no being in like the social capital but yeah I'm sure this isn't gonna make anything better but mm -hmm. the Tower of the Hand is almost kind of a similar kind of space like this could be part of a literary trope Joel you might be able to back me up here is this kind of mad woman in the attic kind of stuff Oh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. Oh, yellow like the wallpaper. yellow wallpaper. Which is one of the creepiest stories I've ever read. It's yellow yeah. wallpaper. Yeah, what's mm -hmm. yellow wallpaper? Whoa. I'm talking about Jane Eyre. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking, it's like a Victorian kind of horror. Or it's like a early this, horror This, like, story. husband uh, keeps, what is it? He keeps the wife in the attic and... In a room, and she has yellow wallpaper, and then she sees, like, things coming out she, of like, it. She, like, goes crazy. Yeah. Oh, awesome. that sounds inspired by... That kind of trope, because Jane yeah. Eyre is, is, has that kind of gothic. Secretly, kind of there's a wife upstairs. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that, that that's a really cool observation, Charles. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's it's even freer to grow because she is in a place of kind of unparalleled power. There are men there who want to marry her, and you know, uh, the Blackfish giving this kind of series of expositions about uh, the different. You know, sort of how the rest of the nobles are feeling in the Vale, how Liza is, what everyone's thoughts are, what the situation with Robert is. The way he describes it seems like she's only playing at marriage and receiving suitors and that she wants to just rule. And I think that we're starting to see some of, you know, everyone else, kind of the Knights of the Vale, a lot of the structures of power are intact, but we're probably going to see the effects of her rule trickling down to the rest of the Vale soon. Yes, although it could be that she's just saving herself for her one true love. Yeah, the suitors oh, lining up really reminded me right. of, oh God, I want to say Penelope and Odysseus. Is it yeah. Penelope? Yes. Yeah. Going back to high school. Oh, I thought of my first thought was Penelope. Oh, like the Christina Ricci, <laughs> which Peter Dinklage is in. I really like that movie. Oh. Is that where she's like the pig? Mm-hmm. 
Um, but uh, no, like with, with all the suitor, suitors lighting, you just yeah, they'll Sorry. go up to that corner. Um, with all the suitors lining up, I thought uh, I thought Penelope and Odysseus, mm -hmm. and she's just waiting for Littlefinger to come home mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh God, Speaking both of clever men, I don't well, want to associate Odysseus with him, but you're right. <laughs> but that, that's more literary tropes. Yeah. It's really cool. I like that this chapter is Catelyn's all like, oh, my sister will be able to help. And <laughs> she hasn't seen her sister in so long. And it does, for me, kind of remind me of Ned and Robert, which is oh, weird because yeah. they, it's both these ties to the eerie of like what these mm -hmm. people were like to them in the veil. Yeah. And they come back and... Well, I was actually interested. I think this is Catelyn's first time in the Vale, which I didn't realize yeah. until oh, yeah, this yeah, yeah. read through. Yeah. Because all of her, she knows how that's it is. That's right. Yeah. She's, 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 she's like, oh, okay. This yeah, is what, like, that's oh, yeah, right. This is what which Ned is, told me which about. Which is really cool that, like, I think it's, I bet there's some kind of conflict with Catelyn where she's heard stories of this place from the man she loves. Her sister lives there. She probably expected at some point to go there, but now she's taking her first visit in this horrible moon, like moonlit mm -hmm. ascent under these terrible circumstances. And I bet there's a lot of conflict there. I like the way that George is kind of layering those character beats and the kind of, that kind of uh, frustration that she feels with, like this was supposed to be a happy trip and now it's forever tainted yeah yeah though there is she has some she has a small smile that she's able to have in spite of herself for yeah. the blackfish even though a page before as she's entering she it's saying that sometimes she felt as though her heart had turned to stone yep. oh god yeah. we didn't point that out the, the i was waiting to get where we could bring that i didn't want to just be like guys <laughs> this is maybe yeah. the single biggest <laughs> foreshadowing in all the yeah. books or it's up there there's a lot of john stuff but yeah, she felt as though her heart had turned to stone, just like... Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, when she does meet Liza, mm. I really love the line, uh, You look well, Catelyn lied. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> dot, 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 tired. <laughs> Well, that whole paragraph actually is something that, it's gonna come up later in Clash of Kings with Brienne, but Catelyn, uh, I think one of the interesting, I would say faults of her character is that she thinks women are partially defined at least by their beauty. Yes, yeah. she's really tied up in how other women look. Yeah. Really? Yeah. For yeah. sure. Like she has this whole, uh, this whole paragraph where she's, cause remember this is her POV. So she's like judging how Liza looks, think mm -hmm. of body pale and puffy of face and how lovely and full of hope she had been all that remained of her sister's beauty was the great fall of thick auburn, auburn hair. Yeah. Like, she's, yeah. yeah, she's very... And concerned. her internal monologue when she meets Brienne is so mean. Like, yeah. 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 It's kind I, of upsetting. I think there's a quote of, like, nothing is more cruel than, like, uh, an ugly woman or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's I'm, real. I'm really curious, then, to think more about her relationship with her daughters, because we do get a line in this about when she's thinking how naive Maya Stone is, yeah, that she was, relates immediately to Sansa. Mm -hmm. and yeah. I thought, well, what is your relationship I with Sansa? I think she takes you not great pride this way? in how pretty Sansa is. Mm -hmm. And how innocent as well. I mean, she's kind of judging this this poor girl who's well, so innocent about her I, ideas. About I, really like, uh, I really like this interaction with Maya Stone for a couple of reasons, it's especially on, on a reread. Um, I think it's interesting because it further uh, illuminates Catelyn's relationship to, or Catelyn's feelings on bastards. Of course, mm -hmm. yes. Um, which is obviously so complex. And I think that it's really important that, like Maya Stone is described as someone who's attractive. So I think there's a conflict there with Catelyn. Mm -hmm. And it's it's foreshadowing, and it's another one of the, these instances of George like laying these breadcrumbs. And uh, I don't want to give too much away be, well, we know in the show, from the show, that Sansa comes to the Vale. Yes. Okay, so this isn't giving anything away. But Sansa's going to meet Maya Stone. Mm -hmm. And Sansa's interactions with her compared now on a reread oh, with Catelyn's interactions, I think are very... It's, it was interesting to me as a mm -hmm. rereader to see how 
Catelyn interacts with her versus Sansa later. Yeah. I, I imagine based on what Maya sort of thinks of her future, it would be interesting to return to her and see how she's doing later. I don't remember how that worked out, but oh. I have a feeling that Cat was right. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> um, uh, oh, before we get too far away from it, I was... You had an awesome that's, point. That's literally what I was yeah. just going to bring up. Yeah, before oh, we yeah. get too far. Um, so the Blackfish oh, yeah. so tells... Good. Yeah, this is my little theory here. He tells Catelyn that Liza... Uh, I'll just read really quick. 366. Yeah, page 366. The Liza who came back from King's Landing is not the same girl who went south when her husband was named Hand. Those years were hard for her, and then a little bit further down. Two babes, still born, twice as many miscarriages, Lord Aaron's death... Catelyn, the gods gave Liza only one child, and he is all your sister lives for now. Poor boy. So, and then I forget later. They they describe her son. I mean, we all know. Sickly. Sickly, weak. He shakes. He cries. Six years old, sickly, and prone to weep if you take his dolls away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here's my theory. I think that all of these miscarriages and stillborn children, I think that those were all... Uh, self-inflicted abortions or self-inflicted miscarriages and I think she attempted to abort Sweet Robin that's not what he's called in the books that's just show right Robin does she ever no. say Sweet Robin Sansa, does she say Sweet Sansa Robin Sansa does later yeah so but so yeah Lord Robert that's my theory because it, so what they would use in Westeros would be like a tea it'd moon, be like moon, moon tea. tea it'd be like different herbs and stuff and there tansy. is a yes tansy Tansy, yes, yeah, and there's a chance there is a risk with using those kinds of herbs uh, to induce a miscarriage that if you are indeed pregnant and it doesn't work, there is a risk of injury or illness to the unborn baby. And I think I think that could be why Robert is so sickly I really and like so that ill. Theory. Now, yeah. what, Chelsea, would her motivations behind that be? She wants to have someone else's babies. I don't think <laughs> she wants to be tied down. I think because, okay, when you think about it, yeah, having the heir to the veil, politically, great. That's something you would want to have. But I don't think Liza's that person. I think she Liza. She doesn't think that way. She doesn't think that way. I think she genuinely just wants Littlefinger's babies. <laughs> you know? We'll get into a lot of that later on as that plot continues. Yeah, well, and I think also <laughs> part of it, too, and, yeah, we'll get into this later, but her marriage with John Aaron was arranged. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think she didn't want to concede to that and follow through. I think maybe she that was her way of almost rebelling against it because they didn't I want to get into like too Kat spoilery shit. Yeah. And John Aaron was much older. Because remember, older. he uh, uh, sired? Fostered. He fostered Ned and Robert. So he was old enough to be their dad. And then she had to marry him. That's like right. marrying someone the next generation up. Well, he, he's of an age with Hoster. Yeah, like yeah, he's she had to marry someone her dad's age, mm -hmm. so that uh, I could definitely see her taking that route to like rebel against this arrangement. Yeah, because as we've seen in other women like Cersei, clearly a lot of these women hate these circumstances and being forced to marry for political reasons. Yeah. So Chelsea, what do you think about her relationship to Robert, young Robert, now, now that she's so protective of him? Ah. <sighs> I was thinking about, I know, I was actually thinking, like, how does that align with that yeah. theory? Would she have changed her mind, or is she sort of, is having an heir? I mean, importance? I think it could be as simple as, like, once she gave birth to a child that was viable enough, she just, she just attached. Yeah. 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 Like, I think it could be as simple as that. Do you guys think there's any chance that Robert is Littlefinger's? I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll ever I ha I get was, that in the books. Like I don't think that's ever going to be revealed because that's too much. Like this kid is somebody else's kid, but like is the yeah. I don't know if the timeline works out. Well, also, guys, all this stuff we're talking about with Littlefinger and Liza, I think we should back up because uh, it comes up later. It, it's, it's such an important thing later, and I'm sure you're sitting here like. Well, I know from the show. Yeah, but there's a lot more details that are revealed. Pants uh, is like two years from Phoebe, now. Phoebe, yes, Phoebe. There's a lot of reasons I cannot yet mention either because it's stuff that comes up later. All right, we can move on then. Yeah, yeah. It's just I think that 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 observation though is a really excellent theory, Chelsea. And I'm glad. But yeah, with Maya Stone, I do like the complicated feelings that Catelyn has. The thought made her angry and guilty both at once. Mm -hmm. Later on, the next page, when on um, 370, 
when uh, Maya's talking about her naive hopes for the future, Catelyn smiles, but it was tinged with sadness, which I think comes, it's pitying. It's pitying this poor dumb bastard girl, as she's probably thinking. I, but I really like that later, Maya has to save Catelyn. Yeah. She mm. up on that little she bridge. She relies on the kindness. Of I the love bastard. the expression, uh, if, if Michael Redfort, the knight, or the squire that Maya's in love with, laid with this girl at all, it would be on the wrong side of the sheet. Yeah. Like, is... Catelyn's just very much like, oh, well, they'll just, they'll just have this affair. Yeah. And, like, that'll be all she'll get. Yeah. And she'll constantly pine for him. Like, like Catelyn vacillates so much between, like, s being super stubborn and super realist. And I think that this kind of, like, micro uh, example of that mirrors her greater feelings toward her situation with Tyrion. Like, it's, it's, it's just, it's a small situation of, well... That's great, but in reality, this is probably the case. And she already says, like, she, like at the beginning of this chapter, I think she's like, she starts to doubt if she was right about Tyrion. And Not I, for the yeah. first time, right? And I think in later in the Tyrion chapter, we start to get that, like, Catelyn's like, I've made a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like that early on. Catelyn says, "I was born a Tully and married to a Stark. I do not fear easily." I think that's the quote. I don't see it right now, but then. Later on, when she's doing it, yep. fear catches Catelyn in its jaws. Yes. And uh, she has to swallow what remains of her pride by asking the bastard girl for help. And it's a scary you know, crossing. It's three feet wide. Yeah. yeah it's drop terrifying. Off on either side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't catch it. Is it a bridge or is it like I think it's actual rock? I think that's it's a just rock like sticking. Bridge. Bridge. Okay. Yeah. yeah. A high saddle between two spires of rock. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what saddle is made of, but. Uh, yeah, I, I just love this. I love the Eerie and how safe I would feel up there. These three castles going up there, I love this description. Uh, oh. they, they each get just smaller and smaller. Stone, and like, snow, and sky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just, yeah, Tyrion thinks later on about how, yeah, how could you do this? It would be hell to try to take the Eerie. Mm -hmm. There's no way without dragons. There's no way. Overall, so this section is not in the show, and I understand why, just from a production standpoint. Mm -hmm. But I... What what it, we do lose is seeing another instance of Catelyn's dogged determination and pushing herself physically to meet her sister's wishes to get to the top, uh, and this kind of conflicted feeling that she's getting from receiving help from a bastard. And there and and also beyond that, I think just cool world building because we get so in detail uh, of these steps into the mountain that we just don't in the eerie like it's a cool thing in the show but yeah it's it's more awesome here yeah i'm not sure if show watchers realize just how secure i mean they they say it a bunch in the show that the eerie is impregnable but yeah. to, uh you know there it's words here we really see it firsthand mm -hmm. um yeah we get a repeat of the seed is strong liza <laughs> saying tell them the seed is strong and she just thinks it means john aaron's mm -hmm. seed uh Anything else, guys? I think this? there's a really important admission to herself by Catelyn on the bottom of 376, right before the chapter ends. Um, uh, she says, for the, when talking about uh, Robert Aaron, Catelyn says, for the first time she understood why the king had tried to take the child away from his mother to foster with the Lannisters. Yeah. And I think that's a big deal for Catelyn to admit. Yeah. Next, she hates the Lannisters, mm -hmm. but he, here she's like, oh, I, I get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> for, like, when, since I started watching the show, I would just always call him the tit sucker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what he is. That's what everyone thinks, though, I think. The heavy breast tip with red, is that the description? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the nipple wet and red. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, with his age yeah. and speaking full sentences. It's just a gross image. Yeah. yeah. This is like the first really descriptive nipple. Like, you know, he George R. R. Martin really likes to describe nipples. He, didn't he describe Danny's nipples? Oh, yeah. In the book? Yeah. I yeah. had luckily forgotten that. It's a lot of nipple description. A lot of nipple description. Also, fun fact, the actress who plays Liza is also in a movie called... <laughs> The Witch, That's right. yes. which is a great is movie so good. if you like ambient horror, but uh, she also breastfeeds in that. So Yeah, I was like, that she did, that's her like niche. Yeah. <laughs> if you really just love seeing that lady breastfeed, don't worry. Have I got news for you? Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, guys, any other thoughts with Catlin 6? Any other stray thoughts? It, I, good plot chapter, cool images with the eerie. I think it, it furthers the mystery aspect of things. We meet uh, Nestor Royce, yep. and uh, show watchers will uh, perhaps remember Bronzian. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. a... Uh, I think they mentioned in here that Nestor is from a lower branch of the Royce house. Yep. But he's chill. That's going to come into conflict uh, or come into the story later, those two branches. And then, yes, Maya Stone will come back. And I think we even get a little bit of closure on her situation with Michael, Michelle? Michael? I think just Michael. It's just Michael. Michael. Yeah. Michelle. Just spell it Michael then. No, it's a Y. <laughs> you got to make it fantasy. Robert. <laughs> All right. So, oh, and we get uh, that Tyrion and Bronn are getting closer. Ooh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's that's always good. Moving on to Eddard Nine, short but pivotal chapter. Uh -huh. I always point to this scene in the show as the, the the scene that like made me just realize how crazy this show was. It happened so early in the show. It's episode five. I thought it was episode four. It was really? the end of episode five. Wow. Still, though. Yeah, from that Which, point like, on. I guess it's halfway through the season. It's halfway through the book. Yeah. In my head, it happens so late, but I understand why. It's There's a, there's a lot of... Because once it happens... Sort of back and forth, yeah. Yeah. It should just... That egg is broke. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and just to remind folks where we last left Ned... Please. He had just resigned as Hand of the King over the possible assassination of uh, Daenerys. Yeah. And he was making arrangements to leave. Then Littlefinger comes in and says, oh, more piece of, another piece of the mystery. Come follow me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They go to a brothel where they meet another bastard. So we're picking up right there, I guess. Uh, it's best to not try to think of these chapters as taking place in the order that they take place in. Because, yeah, I mean, Martin has said himself that... They're all over the place time wise. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just read each, especially with Danny. You can just read her Chelsea. entirely by yourself. Can I go on? Yeah, I kind of want one of those. So, uh, Gressel, you want to take the reins on this chapter? Sure. Um, the thing that really, the thing that really blew my mind reading this again, um, having recently rewatched season one of the show, relatively recently, is that Jamie and Ned don't fight. Mm. No. Which, yes. which blew my mind. I wrote that in the margins. There's no sword fight there's here. No, well, there's, there's kind of a sword fight, but there's no sword fight between, between, them, between yeah. Jamie and Jamie And Jamie even leaves. Jamie leaves. He's just like, kill his men. Like, which, like, which is frustrating on a couple levels because, um, one, I want Jamie Lannister and Eddard Stark to fight. <laughs> and two, we've had, uh, We've had all of this buildup of Jamie being this great swordsman and great warrior, and he's not doing that here. He's not displaying that prowess. Yeah. And he's boasting, and he's like, I'll do you like I did Eris, but, like, he's not exemplifying that. He doesn't have that great... Mo like, the sh this, is, this is an instance where I think the show made things better, because, uh, he, like, Jamie has the great moment where he kills Jory... Yeah, especially because the show sets it up in the pre oh, previous yeah. episode the where they have a scene stuff, together, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. where Jory's like, "Hey, Jamie, I like really respect you." And Jamie's like, "Yeah, you're cool." Yeah, um, and he um, ends up stabbing him in the eye. So yeah. good on the show for that. And I think mm. that uh, so looking at this kind of looking at one of the things we want to do in the book club is look at this as an adaptation. Good on the show and adapting this scene to make it more dramatic. It's not mm -hmm. the most amazing sword fight in the world in the show, but it's still pretty great and I think that is more dramatic than just Jamie riding up ordering them to kill Ned's men and leaving. How do you guys feel about the differences in the leg injuries? Because here, uh, well one, here it's raining and it's at night I think. Yeah. It's yeah. dark and raining yeah. whereas in the show it's... I like it's, that imagery. Right. Yeah, I like the imagery more. Uh, but here Ned just falls off his horse and the horse falls on his um, leg. Yeah. yeah. Well, well they, then, they kill his horse, don't they? May Oh, maybe, yeah. But then in the show I find it a little bit contrived that they're having that fight, and then like a guy just walks up behind Ned, stabs him in the leg. But I like Jamie that Jamie then and, like, kills that guy. He doesn't kill him. Oh, he doesn't kill him. No, he just he like hits knocks him, him out. Oh, yeah. it would have been yeah. better if he killed him. But I like I like that choice though because it shows that Jamie does it. It furthers this it, early the in the show. It's Jamie has a sense of honor. That's true. So I I'm missing that characterization from Jamie, which is frustrating for me as a big Jamie fan. <laughs> and it's, uh, so so I, I don't love that just a horse falls on him. However, the image of Ned with his badly broken leg, cr 
crawling over to Jory. Yeah. Wow. And they find him holding oh, Jory. Jory. Yeah. Devastating. I love Jory. Yeah, there's just, bones sticking out. Yeah. 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 I'd say up to this point, Jory is the most significant character to die. Yeah. Right? I think yeah. so. Lady. Lady. Can we call Lady a character? Yeah. Yes. For sure. Character, but, but we didn't um, get to know her that his, well. She's his injury in the book is so much more debilitating. Like, is he out cold like that in the show for, like, a week? I, he passes out. I don't know if they make it as explicit as how long. But yeah. Like, but, yeah, being out like, for, holy like, a week. Fuck. Is, yeah. is it blood loss that does it's it? future chapters. That and, I think, Picel. Oh, Picel. Just milk drugs. Him. Drugged him. Yeah. Yeah. Picel just always goes for the drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do like, in their confrontation, having had the show version first and coming to this version, uh, it was just interesting to see them not fight because... I, don't know, I guess it, it speaks to the number of Stark men. Hey, sorry about that. That was weird. That was weird, and now it's uh, covering the chat, too. How the hell? Hey, yeah. Guys. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Who could do the, the song? Baby. Hey, hey, <laughs> okay, are we back? I don't was... know what happened there. <laughs> um, Everyone just, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Was that terrifying? <laughs> awesome. You guys know. You guys know how it is. Um, wait, let me talk a little right. bit about Littlefinger here. Hey, whores seldom sink, and when they are boarded by pirates, why, the pirates pay good coin like everyone else. Lord Peter chuckled at his own wit. <laughs> I wrote a little smiley face there. It just makes me happy that he's enjoying himself. I just hate slash enjoy how dumb he's playing. Yeah. yeah. When, the, when the Lancers ride up, he's like, my lord, you cannot do this. He is the hand of the king. Yeah. Twirls. He's like, I'll get the city watch, little yeah. we know. Oh, yeah. why, why, would, uh, Rob, why would John Aaron have been checking on the bastards? Oh, doubtless Robert asked him to see that they were provided mm -hmm. for. Pool, sure. Oh my god, guys, this poor woman. Who's Ugh. just like, tell oh, him the, how beautiful my baby is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like sad. And then he something. promises. And then he promises her, I will, Ned had promised her. Yeah. That was his curse. Yeah. Robert would swear on dying love and forget them before even fall, but Ned Stark kept his vows. Uh -huh. He thought of the promises he'd made to Lyanna as she lay dying mm -hmm. and the price he'd paid to keep them. Yeah. I added three exclamation points to that because, mm -hmm. yeah, that pricey pay was Catelyn being pissed at him for 20 years. I and think this is, oh, sorry. Chuck, oh, no, there's ahead. another, uh, right around the same part where he's he's leaving the brothel. Uh, for the first time in years, he found himself remembering Rhaegar Targaryen. He wondered if Rhaegar had frequented brothels. Somehow he thought not. I, I was going to bring up the exact same point. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's a great sentence. I think it's so important to recognize that any time in Ned's POV that he thinks about Rhaegar, it's never negative. Never. Well, I think it's interesting too that this comment comes after on the, on the previous uh, set of pages on 379 where Lyanna says in a memory, love is sweet, dearest Ned, but it cannot change a man's nature. So he's basically reminiscing on Rhaegar's nature versus Robert. Yeah. Where So knowing what Ned knows and knowing what we suspect, um, He's kind of basically saying, like, well, Rhaegar would have been the better husband for, yeah. for Lyanna. I think he's setting up just Lyanna in his POV as, like, an accurate moral compass for other characters. Like, she knows Robert as we know him. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we can assume that the way we think she thinks of Rhaegar is, like, the truth. You I know? think it's interesting, too, to think about how all the comparisons between Arya and Lyanna and how Arya is kind of a, a decent judge of character and John as well, like, has a good sense of who people are right away. So you think someone who's kind of lived a little bit more, uh, like Liana, would have a more developed sense of, of what? Two things from the chat I want to bring up. First, uh, Eric Mishima says, no, this is the sixth time he's thought of Rhaegar in just a few months. Yeah, uh, for the first time in years, he found himself remembering Rhaegar Targaryen. Does that, how does that square well, up? It's curious because... I oh, because does him, he think of him? 
I mean, he, right? he must. But for me, I was taking him at his word, and I was like, well, that's really interesting because of... He would be thinking of... Wait, can we, are we, are we talking about what? R plus L equals J? Are we, how yeah. much are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. everyone knows. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he will think of John. He will think of him as Liana's son and his blood. But the fact that he would not think of Rhaegar for years, like he is a Targaryen, but not specifically as Rhaegar's son, is interesting to me. I think the way that I interpreted that is he's thinking not about Rhaegar the idea, but Rhaegar the man. I see, yeah. That makes so sense. he's mm-hmm. thinking about who Rhaegar was as a person versus just this, essentially this thing that happened, this, yeah. this image that Robert killed on the trident, um, the smashing of a dynasty versus this is a person who, because I think Ned has probably spent a long time separating the person from the idea. For sure. Uh, in order to kind of justify his feelings with Robert and his feelings towards his sister. So for him to think about who Rhaegar was as a person in relation, if, if, if what we're looking at is correct, in relation to his relationship with Lyanna, that I think is the first time he's thought about that in years. Yeah, it seems about right. Uh, not much else on this chat. Well, we do have... Um, no, I, I, I don't need to relive Jory being yeah, murdered again. Finger, it's too much. finger rides off. Well, well, hold on. Uh, oh, yeah, little finger just like, oh, bye. We have, we oh, have, oh uh, this is, yeah, this is a cool detail. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Cersei had the babes killed. Mm. Uh, speaking of some of Robert's bastards, a pair of twins on a serving wench at Casterly Rock three years ago. Cersei had them killed and sold the mother to a passing slaver. One, that's cra- That that's worse than most things that Cersei has done in the show up to season six. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, there's there's a few things that this makes me think of. One is the story of Taisha, which I won't get into why. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it has to do with being too much in the front to Lannister mm-hmm. pride mm-hmm. that close to home. Sure. Uh, Taisha is Tyrion's the very focal ex-wife that he's going to think about a lot in these books later on. But I just want to plant that seed that this reminded me of that. And two, this is Cersei killing baby Children. bastards of Roberts. And uh, th- this is the first indication we get of this in the books. We're going to see this happen again mm. later. And there is a difference between book and show what happens. So mm-hmm. just remember that. And the fact that she sold the mother to a slaver. Yeah. You know? Like mm-hmm. this is, this. Is, oh, that's true. Yeah, this is Cersei getting, like, selling off other women. Uh, that's true. Mm-hmm. You know? Cersei very much views other women as just objects. And weak. And weak, yeah. It's part of that penis envy that she has. No, for sure. And the fact that she just straight up sells her to a slaver, and everyone knows this. Yeah, when slavery is very illegal yeah, in that's Westeros. That's the crime that uh, Ned was going to kill Jorah for. Right. Yeah. So I think that is very revealing. Mm-hmm. Let's get the mention of Stannis and another. Uh, affront to Stannis' pride. That oh, Robert yeah, we committed. get that story. I forgot. Oh, that's really important. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know he's acknowledged that boy at Storm's End, the one he fathered the night Lord Stannis wed. I forgot this was Littlefinger talking. <laughs> he, he could hardly do otherwise. The mother was a Florent, niece to the Lady Celise, one of her bedmaids. Renly says that Robert carried the girl upstairs during the feast and broke in the wedding bed while Stannis and his bride were still dancing. Lord Stannis seemed to think that was a blot on the honor of his wife's house. So when the boy was born, she shipped him off to Renly. There's a couple really interesting things, I think, to unpack from that. Mm-hmm. Um, one, the image of Stannis and Sleece dancing is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, God. It was probably very <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes. horrible. It was like middle room, school. Room for the seven. <laughs> beforehand. Uh, the other is Stannis, though, maybe out of respect for Sleece, didn't keep the the bedmaid or handmaid or whatever at Storm's End, took her with them, and then when the boy was born, shipped the boy to Renly at Storm's End, and also kept him separate from Robert. Yeah. So I think that that's something that's interesting to think about is is how Stannis handled that situation. Yeah. So we're we're getting kind of little bits of Stannis's character mm-hmm. um, throughout this book before we even meet him, and I think that's going to be really important. Uh, now that we're halfway through through game, when we get to Clash, and we meet Stannis right away. Yeah, we'll be very informed. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're going to learn that Stannis did not take too kindly to Robert doing that. 
It's one of the uh, very uh, mm. the grudge he holds against uh -huh. Robert. It's mm. the fact that he the did smirching that. his marriage. Yes, yeah. Stan is the manis. That's right, Clarence. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. Stanish shuffle. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that would be. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Anything else that we want to talk about here? Jory's sad, man. Like <laughs> I know. Cradling Jory Cassell's body in his arms yeah. is such a bummer. And then like later when we get more from like this is like the Cassells are just a bummer. Like their whole history. Yeah. Oh, Roderick. Like everything well, about Roderick them is and sad. Martin and yeah. like How are Roderick and uh, Jory related? Cousins? Cousins? Oh, that's fine. It'll stay like that. Okay. Yeah. Oh. But what if I want that stuff? You can go get another car. Oh, uh, we'll get another car. Yeah, That's an interesting car. question. Yeah. Why does Robert show love to certain bastards like Edric and ignore others? I think it's only because he's forced to. He was forced to acknowledge Maya, and he was forced to uh, acknowledge Edric. So, like, like, Ned talks about how he doted on Maya when they were still in the Vale. And what happened before he was king? Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, both. No, I. Mm. Or before married to Cersei. Maybe well, Maya, Maya was. Sure. Maya was eighteen years ago. Edric. Okay. Edric would have no, been after. Because he's fifteen. So it would have been shortly. Would have been like right after. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna. Joel's gonna be doing some audio stuff, but I think we'll still manage to be able to uh, have this conversation. Yeah. Okay. Joel, should we kind of like, maybe we should plug some stuff or. Do we need to hit stop on the record again? No. No, I just gotta hit record. Just fire it back up. Oh, wait. What? Cut it. I want to do something that ch Chelsea's mic before we start up again. Stop it real quick. That's oh, something. is it in my shirt? No, no, no. You're good. I just, just want to make sure we have this stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuff. Can we tease that? We'll tease it. We'll okay. tease it at the end. Okay. I need a lamp. I, need, I looked if there was a little finger mug. It does not exist. I'm sure someone to make it. Someone make me a little finger mug. We're gonna please. talk about stuff we want people to make for us. At the <laughs> yeah, end. make us make, <laughs> us, make stuff. us stuff, guys. We sit here and read a book for you. <laughs> uh, can we go on to Danny? Yeah. Let's yeah. move on to Daenerys. Which Daenerys is this? This I is Daenerys Four. I went through um, and wrote uh, just you did every do chapter. Them all? I, yeah. I haven't done that yet. Yeah. 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 I decided uh, enough so was spell enough. Daenerys for me. Daenerys. D A E N E R Y S I B. All right, so Daenerys, she arrives with the Kalsar at Vase Dothrak. She yep. sees the place and its uh, dynamic variety of slave-built dwellings and uh, just grass-built Dothraki dwellings. Uh, talking with Sir Jorah about Viserys being problematic and also the Dothraki's chances in the Seven Kingdoms. Uh, tries to calm her brother with some gifts, but he rejects them. She strikes him on the face and... Cradles, uh, cradles the dragon egg while she takes a nap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this... God, anyone else... Uh, how do we feel about Viserys? Cause he's the worst. He's the, yeah, the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's obviously the worst, but yeah. is he too much the worst? Like, from, no. from like, George's writing? No. Did George make him too he's much of a caricature of evil? consistently the worst, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I like, think it's important in this chapter that we see him through Danny's perspective because she's going on this journey of... It's a great having moment. To, yeah, she's having to give up more and more investment in him. At first, it's it's fear, and he is her only source of security. And now we're at the point where she does not love him. She pities, pities him, him for sure. Yeah. And want, and she, you know, she acknowledges him as family, but is almost at a breaking point. Yeah. yeah. And I think she reaches that breaking point here. Yeah. I, yeah. I would think he was too much if he wasn't so fucking pathetic. <laughs> like when they're like, oh, would you like to ride in the cart? And he's <laughs> like, yeah, finally, some respect. <laughs> and he doesn't get that it's an insult. Like the stuff like game. that makes me think, okay, no, it's not. I think it's all, like his consistency, I think is also something that's important to note. Yeah. Like he isn't, like he doesn't get more like cackly, ridiculous villainy. He's not tying her to the train tracks. He's <laughs> consistent in that she's beneath him mm. and he's the best thing on this yeah, earth. Yeah, and, and he's just biding his time. Right. Um, I, I, and what's frustrating to me in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the books versus the show for Viserys is, oh God, what's the dude's name? Harry, Harry, Harry Lloyd. Lloyd. Yeah. Harry Lloyd oh God. does Harry an Lloyd. amazing Harry Lloyd, if job. you're watching this, 
because I know he's a huge fan of the books. Uh, Please be on book club. We will <laughs> fucking fly you here. I don't care. I'll pay. I'll so, pay for your plane ticket. He's so so good. He's in, so good in humanizing Viserys in very small moments. Yeah. He does a great job performing those moments, and I think that that's something that I miss in uh, the books is that if you look for those you can probably find them but I don't really think that they're there on the page at least if you don't want them to be yeah I like that Megan Rich's point Viserra a whole dynasty fell on his shoulders so okay yeah, yeah. So if, you're, that's what I if mean. you're if you're a weak looking person for, if you're looking for things to kind of make excuses for Viserys yeah. then you can but he doesn't it's not like he has a softening moment like Rob had acknowledging like there's a huge weight on my shoulders I'm the only one who can carry this forward he just feels entitled to all of this that has nothing, that he's, he has accomplished nothing. He's won no battles. Well, he would never, I don't think he would ever admit that vulnerability. No. You know? Like, he probably deep, I don't even know if he can ex acknowledge it to himself. He does have deep down no inside. one but his sister who relies on him for everything. Yeah, and I think he wants to maintain that dominance over her, which he always does. And so he would never open up to her like Rob might to one of his siblings like with Bran, how he does in the, the Bran chapter. Yeah. So I think, yeah, uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know if he can even be self-aware enough to like realize the, the pressure that he's feeling, but I think at least subconsciously it's, it's affecting him. His self-awareness is a real problem, I think. Uh, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit frustrating for me to get to this chapter and see him still Not treat the Dothraki the same way yeah. as he's been mm -hmm. treating them the entire time, not having learned anything from spending time with them. But imagine like coming from, like knowing you're a Targaryen and knowing that the Targaryens came to Westeros, conquered it, and then built all this crazy shit. And then he goes to Vase Dothrak and it's like, they didn't build any of this, they mm -hmm. just took it. Even Jor admits that he's right on that point. Yeah. Is that they haven't true. built anything. Yeah, yeah, so I just think Viserys is just a life of complete entitlement, like growing up just knowing stuff has been stolen from you mm -hmm. has to turn you into the mm -hmm. biggest asshole of all time. And then time. to see the city consisting only of a stolen stuff that's been things. stolen that's from really people is yeah, like to him it's just it's nothing. Yeah, there's yeah. there's so much uh, interesting imagery. The forgotten deities of dead cities. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot. This reminded me, like like the Veil Passage. There's a lot of really beautiful language in uh, the description of. Based on Thrak, which is really, I mm -hmm. think that helps kind of get us through this kind of middle doldrums, I think, of this of the story, um, where it's just like, we just need to hit some beats before we get into some of the bigger stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely feel like when we're in the Catelyn chapter, that I'm like, okay, we need to get to the Vale, so we can eventually probably leave the Vale, uh, or leave Vase of Thrak, to get to the Vase of Thrak. So, I mean, we also have a lot of territory covered here where they're just looking at what's around them and talking about possibly going to Westeros, we get into uh, just the nitty gritty of how the Dothraki could conquer the Seven Kingdoms. Yeah, yeah. I Jorah always like those about, discussions. Yeah, especially yeah. Jorah talking about how like, you know, if you'd asked me then, I would have said no way, but now like if they met in the field, they'd do great, but they couldn't siege a castle. But, and then I like that he's, I, I really like Robert should have been born Dothraki. Yeah. That's great yeah. insight into yeah. Robert's character. Yeah. And, and Jorah's one who's fought alongside Robert twice. Uh, like he, Greyjoy Rebellion and... The Trident. He would have been at the Trident. Would he have? Jorah? Yeah. Oh. For sure. He would have fought with, oh, yeah, he would have fought with the North, with Northern this. men. The North But men. would he have been at the Trident? I don't know. He anyway. definitely knows about what happened at the Trident. Like it's it's spread far and wide, so he can tell that story easily. Mm -hmm. um, I think oh, he could have been at Battle of Bells. He probably would have been with Ned. He would have been with the North. That's neither here nor there. It is interesting though that we get the first mention to Danny here of Starks, and that Jorah is oh, shaping his point hate, of view of them. Yeah, Spitz. you hate this Lord Stark. Mm, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he took from me all I love, and for the sake of a few lice-ridden po poachers and his precious honor. Another yeah. character's perspective on the honor of Ned Stark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a negative trait. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, we also, I personally enjoyed thinking about the concept of cities and Pentos being a place where... The Fresh uh, Maker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where you have high buildings kind of towering and... Phase other act being more like Los Angeles, where you have things <laughs> just like spreading sprawling. out and it's hot. I definitely thought about that too. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, we obviously get the very important point that it's forbidden to carry a blade in Vase Dothrak or mm -hmm. to shed a free man's blood. Yep. A free man's blood? You can just kill your slaves? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. And then, I really love, on page 391 of our mass market paperbacks, the description of blood riders. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. they're a mm -hmm. point in the show, but I don't know if the show ever uh, points out that they share a single life. And when the Cal dies, his blood riders are supposed to die with him to ride at his side in the Nightlands. Like, if a Cal dies in battle, they're supposed to kill the guy who killed him and then kill themselves? Yeah. Not so explicit. It doesn't spell do, it out. Die. But yeah, they are supposed to then follow him joyfully into the grave. Mm -hmm. I'm Is guessing... it ever brought up what <laughs> happens if a blood rider <laughs> dies first? Like, are they? Is their memory yeah. just, like, shameful? Are they, like... You Not know? if it's in service. Yeah, I, I think don't if think. it's like a secret service kind of thing where if they like die in place of the call, then they're like, you, great job. Okay. <laughs> good, yeah, good job. And then, yes, we also uh, get the names of Cal's three. Is it usually three blood riders? Is that like the, the standard? Because I think in I season know. six, Daenerys has her whole uh, dragon bag speech where she's like, I think she says, most cows have three blood riders. I want all of you to be my yeah. blood yeah, riders, right? Do you know everyone's name, Danny? <laughs> yeah, right. Mm. But uh, so so Cal Drogo's <laughs> blood riders are Koholo, Hago, and Kotho. I don't know if they have show equivalents or if they're in the show. But I like that here we get a little bit of uh, individualization. Form, yeah, characterization yeah. of them yeah. individually. Yeah. How what Koholo is the nicest one? She had treated yeah. her kindly enough. Uh, enough, yeah. I don't think any of them are well. big fans of her. Yeah. But Kotho is scary. Yeah. He has mm -hmm. cruel eyes and quick hands that like to hurt. And he bruises Doria and makes Eerie sob. Damn, this guy sucks. Yeah, yeah he sucks. Yeah. Let's see what happens to him later. Something yeah. will happen. We also get a mention in talk of the Seven Kingdoms of Sir Barristan. Who yep. had gone mm -hmm. over to the Usurper. Yeah. And it makes Danny think that all men yeah. in the Seven Kingdoms are false. Which, like... Bar Barristan being brought up as the example of a false man is like, what? Yeah, that's well, so I, crazy. I really love that part of Barristan's characterization, though. I think it's something that makes him such an is interesting character, especially as, for the bulk of the series, a secondary character. Um, yes. And I think that, uh, you know, her feelings, Danny's feelings toward Barristan and the way that she's kind of informed on, uh, on these these people through these kind of legends almost is really important. Um, how her, her perspective of this home that she's never known. Um, we, we get into... Oh, before we get yeah. too, too far into it, there's, there's the line uh, earlier in the, early in the chapter where she's talking with Jorah about Viserys and she says, what if it were not Viserys? Mm. If, I were so, if it were someone else who led them, someone stronger, could the Dothraki truly conquer the Seven Kingdoms? And I think it's important to note the ellipsis in this sentence. Uh, what, dot, 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 what if it were not Viserys? I think this is the first time she's starting to think of herself as a potential ruler. And then at the end of this chapter, the way that she takes control of, of the Viserys situation uh, is, an, is, I think, the next beat in that story. Um, so I think that line is, a, is an important distinction as we look at Danny's kind of arc uh, throughout game. Mm -hmm. And I love uh, Jorah's sick burn. Viserys could not sweep a stable with 10,000 brooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I liked that. Awesome. Once he, feel like, once he feels like he has permission, he just shits on Viserys anytime yeah. he can. So yeah. much. Yeah, he's like, oh, I can do this? Finally. This guy. <laughs> this guy sucks. I'll be right back. No! No! Me first! Ah, ah. Too much coffee. Yes. Coffee. <laughs> uh, we also, oh, before we get to Viserys and him not liking his gifts, we also get a mentions of Yi-T, a Shy, and a Shadow Yeah, the yes. Eastern market I thought was really interesting. I know. There I are people who are coming there. from the East. So that's what the yeah. what, that's the difference. The Western market is people from Westeros and I guess the free cities. Yeah. And the Eastern market. Because, you know, you Well, think, given how centrally located Vaisalthrak is. Which is crazy because if you look on a map of the known world, the places that we've mm -hmm. seen, Vaisalthrak is pretty far east. But as far as, like the world actually goes, I guess it's pretty central. But if you look at the like real world equivalent. It'd be the Middle East? Yeah, if you're in the Middle East or if you're in Mongolia, like Eastern Mon Western Mongolia. Yeah. That's pretty. No, Western Mongolia is pretty far, far east. Far east, but that's still, there's a good chunk of land. I'm just saying Mongolia because of the. the yeah, you should be thinking of Middle East, I'd say. But it's called the Middle East. Sure, yeah, I understand. But yeah. I'm saying, I'm just saying because of that 
the Dothraki are, are a very Mongol like people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I even like, like you the, just look at the, these yeah. like you know these people from the the, the what do you call them like the steppes, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know like. That's still there's that's a huge continent and Essos is a huge continent. Yeah. So there's still even though they've traveled very far east. They're still, they were still traveling through the West. I just think it's interesting that, you know, when you think of Westeros and then you think of, like, the eastern part of the world includes the Free Cities. But no, as far as, like, the Vestoth Rack is concerned, the Free Cities are part of the West. And it is kind of like Western Europe compared to... I know that this is not at all a comparison, although I guess Western Europe and the UK could be the Free Cities in Westeros. I, yeah, I yeah. think that's fair. And, I, and I, I think that that's something that Viserys touches on with... Uh, or Danny, t you know, talks about how uh, the food is different and more to your liking in the in the Western market because it's from the free cities, which would be more similar to Westerosi food and and culture and things like that. The way geography is thought about it holds up to the real world. Like uh, people from California, they think of Ohio as the East. It's the Midwest. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I also like speaking of. Shadowlands and things in the east is that they, they call out one of the sets of statues like others so misshapen and terrible that Danny could scarcely bear to look at them like those mm -hmm. are from the Shadowlands yeah and I uh, like the mention of like marble statues like there's kind of some there's like a, a kind of uh, Grecian kind of culture that would have had like yeah. marble yeah. statues Oh, I like the real world equivalents. You're talking about like. Wait, I know. I always, that always bugged me too. Like you're <laughs> like you're just dragging yeah, like, like giant this. statues. And like I bet that like a bunch of horses just died. Yeah. Doing yeah. They they had to take them from wherever they went, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the rest of the stuff was kind of built there by different slaves. Um, oh, speak, yeah. So speaking of real world equivalents, and you mentioned the Mongols and the steppe. I like that with some of the customs of Ve stuff rack that. They, you know, you can't have weapons, you can't shed blood, but also you're kind of one Kalasar there. Like, mm -hmm. they're one people. Uh, even even the uh, Klingons remind me of, like, when, even when they're in battle, you would go to a certain place, mm -hmm. all the different groups would just drink I think there's, together. there's, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe that there's some Native American stuff happening there, too. Um, sort of coming to a common place. Yeah, oh. with, like, different, putting aside different tribes, but they would come together first. Yeah, if anyone knows... More specifics. I'd be curious. Like you know, kn knowing where George no. is from. That's true. You know, I'm sure that that's an influence. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some mention of Ulthos. Oh, people. Well, we were people just talking about oh, how yeah. it'd be cool to go to some new places. The maps yeah. are, are cool. Um, awesome. When we get to the Eastern Market, I, there was one detail that I. Sure, go for it. It's it's a meta it's a meta kind of question, and I wonder if there's more there than I'm just you know seeing. But okay, so. Uh, this is when Danny, after kind of settling in, asks uh, her servants to go and get a few <laughs> things for Viserys. No, I shouldn't. Uh, so, let's see. There's some goat that's brought. In, what page are you looking uh, at? 392. Okay. Jiqui roasted the meat with sweet grass and fire pods, basting mm -hmm. it with honey as it cooked, and there were some melons and pomegranates and plums. And some queer eastern fruit Danny did not <gasps> I know. I was trying to Is it dragon it? fruit? What? <laughs> Come on. Oh, maybe. That's, yeah, some that's weird like in Asia. That. Sure, yeah. It's dragon maybe fruit. like figs? Pomegranates? No, no it says she, pomegranates. She it could be rhombus. Sorry, I came in late. So yeah, I was wondering, like, what fruit is it? Yeah. yeah. I would imagine something, some weird looking like dragon fruit, yeah. Or yeah. Um, uh, no, what's it called? But like, like uh, dragon spiky guy? Fruit. Spiky. Kiwana, something like that. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, there's a bunch of fuzzy and a bunch of Whatever. fuzzy and spiky stuff in. Nature. Oh, top 100 movies says uh, Comanche tribes were a giant influence on Dothraki culture. Oh. Yeah, I, oh. I suspected something like that. I didn't. I didn't want to speak out of turn uh, about those influences. I don't know much about Native American culture, but man, Danny's just trying to give Viserys some gifts. Yeah. I know. And he ain't having it. I mean, yeah. part of it's uh, was it Doria. Who, who used the wrong wording, I guess. Yeah. I'm not going to blame Doria for yeah. what Viserys does to her, but... No, and, and the way that Danny thinks about Viserys, it, 
there's still something there. Like, he was still her king, she even thinks. After all, and her brother, they were both blood of the dragon. But this might be the last time she thinks of I him think like this that. is the yeah. last because, time she thinks you know, of him like that. I mean, she definitely should have said, you have no right to a braid, you have won no victories yet. I love that. <laughs> I yeah. wrote, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't even have a sentence where she makes that decision. She just says it. <laughs> as true. And then immediately after, it was the wrong thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've made a huge mistake. Yeah, but of course, Viserys always going for the slut. That's his go-to yeah. insult. Yeah. That's the, how he was yeah. the worst. She, she's, she's married. It just doesn't make sense at a certain point yeah, she's, for the meaning of the word. She's had one lover. Women. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, he like, what, he hits her? He, he uh, oh no, grabs she, her arm like he always does, and then she hits him. Yeah. Which is so awesome. That's and like a breaking point. she spills blood. Yeah. Yep. She, yeah. yeah she's, Ooh. she... Beats the shit out of it. Like, but a, wait, I didn't even realize they're in Vase Doth Rack. Yeah. And she spilled blood of a free man. Yeah. But is he thought of as a free man? Yeah, he's not a slave. I don't know if they think of him that way anymore. They he's, don't care enough, probably. They yeah. probably don't care enough. But still, I think, I think, I'm surprised that there's no uh, consequence for it. I guess nobody else sees it. But I mean, someone's a. Like, it, like we, even get drops, cheek, yeah. we even get drops of his blood. It spattered the beautiful sand silk cloak, like drops of his blood. So yeah. then, okay, so this is interesting then. Do you think that this plays into what happens to Danny later? In what? That there's a mm. kind of curse or mm -hmm. bad juju happening Ooh, you because know what? she spilled blood in this holy huh. place. In all the podcasts I've listened to, I haven't heard this point brought up. Like, that maybe this is the curse of the vice top yeah. right. There's not, I mean, it's a throwaway moment. There's not a lot of emphasis put on it, but perhaps. But if, is this is this one of those things that George does where there's a small moment and then a bigger moment and then an explicit moment? Is and this, we just haven't gotten to those other moments? Yeah. Maybe. It, it is the beginning, for what I know, of a pattern of her not obeying kind of Dothraki rules. That's also mm -hmm. interesting, as she's allegedly becoming more Dothraki. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, uh, I'm just gonna throw that out. Yeah, that's really that's a good yeah. catch. James. We all came to that together. I think Joel and I got there together. Good work, know. guys. Good work, us. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I mean, she curls up with these little she dragon curls eggs. Curls up with the dragon eggs, and this is uh, the one that will become Rhaegal, correct? I I wasn't sure. I know the that green, they, the green. The green. One. Okay. It does. I, I like this passage, uh, bottom of 394 in the mass market edition. She liked to hold them. They were so beautiful, and sometimes just being close to them made her feel stronger, braver, as if somehow she were drawing strength from the stone dragons locked inside. And I think it's interesting in her journey Ooh. also to, on the next page on 395, see her whisper to them, you are the dragon, the true dragon, I know it, I know it. She's thinking of her child as the one who can take the seven kingdoms and rule, and she's yet to really fully acknowledge that she will be the dragon. Yeah, and she's saying this in contrast, obviously, to Viserys, yes. who, at, who just, as we she's said, she's also talking about her unborn child. When, <laughs> uh, when she obviously we we know from the show doesn't yeah. have the child, but she's the mother of dragons, um, so she's essentially you know the egg. Yeah. Either way, there's this thing that she's it's holding right there, and cradling. Yeah. So maybe the dragon heard it and was like, "Oh, you mean me? <laughs> All right, I'm good. I'm good." But very in interesting, nonetheless. Uh, Bran, or do you have anything else, Joe? Yeah, do we have anything else about this one? Uh, oh, there was a small thing. I don't want to get into a huge thing, but I thought this was interesting because this is something we've been talking about throughout Danny's story here, um, going back to the, the episode that you and I did, uh, Joel, with Liz. Mm -hmm. um, when she's talking about how she got uh, Viserys back on a horse, she says, uh, it had taken much pleading and all the pillow tricks Doria had taught her before Danny had been able to make Drogo relent. Yeah. So, I don't want to get into a whole a whole discussion about this, but this is just another instance of like, what is their sexual relationship? Yeah, yeah. we also Pillow get tricks. <laughs> yeah, we also get another mention that since she's become pregnant, Khal Drogo has been just crazy for her, and right. the sex is tiring her out. Yeah. So I, something to think about. Any thoughts? I, I don't get what you're asking. I don't really know what I'm asking. Yeah. Like, what are, what are pillow tricks? No, I, not what are pillow tricks. <laughs> In like, detail. She had, yeah, please. Um, Westeros, Cosmo had just, like, you, put out the best sex tip and she used them all. <laughs> it's just, like, is this, like, is she taking more kind of... Control? Yeah. That's Using her I, sexuality uh, as right, a tool? Yeah, so that's just, like, 
just because it's something we've been talking about throughout Danny's story here. Is this just something that, like, is their sexual, like, relationship growing better now that, like, they've had this, like, that moment under the stars where they conceived and everything, and, like, is she taking more control over him sexually? But then there's that other line. I don't yeah. know. Is it is it even important? I when don't know. Because um, we also get the line where she... Uh, is not able to go to the top of the mountain where Khal Drogo must go. Mm-hmm. And she... she's relieved. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. She's like, finally, she's I can get a night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah, but she's also uh, sort of acknowledging, like, I can't go there, but he can go there. And I think mm-hmm. more and more she's going to try and transform her role of above, above and beyond what a Khaleesi is and put it at the same level as a Khal. Sure, as she grows into becoming yes. a queen and a ruler. Jels, do you have, a, I feel like you, oh. I no. thought you were starting to say something. Uh. Okay. All right, we'll go on to Bran. Forget I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What Bran is this? Five. We are on to Bran five. Bran, Bran trots five. out through, I really like that uh, they go through a winter town. That's yeah. a nice description. Oh, yeah. Oh. I was wondering if, like, we ever see... But like the town that's by Winterfell in the show. I don't think we do. Don't think we haven't we really. Do. Yeah. So. It's like when so, uh, the the family in Pride and Prejudice they go to Meriton. Yeah, it's and they go shop that. for ribbons, <laughs> and then they meet what's his face. Oh, Wickham. Yeah, Mr. Wickham. Mr. Wickham. <laughs> and he's so charming. Instead, we meet Osha and some. Yeah. Other yeah. Instead, yeah. we meet some wildlings. Instead, Fifteen-year-old Rob fucking kills a guy. Yeah, <laughs> it's that yeah. everyone watches this dude get disemboweled, and everyone's like really traumatized. Blue <laughs> snakes. Chelsea, well, you want to take the reins? <laughs> yeah. As it were on this chapter. Sure. I mean, this is Bran trying out his new saddle that Tyrion made for him, or made yeah. the plans for it at least. And uh, yeah, this is the chapter where Rob has to tell Bran that uh, Jory's dead. Like the whole guard pretty much in King's Landing is dead. And uh yeah. We meet Osha. I actually was paying close attention to Osha this time around sure, because I was too. curious to see how involved she was in this like stick 'em up, you know? <laughs> like if if she was like really being violent or if like I'm wondering if she's like a character worth of redemption because obviously she's redeemed and she's like a big fan favorite, I think. I really like Osha, but I was curious to see how violent she was initially. And she's not. She's like, we should bring him to Mance. Like, Mance would kill to have Benjamin Starks, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and she also, there are several occasions of her not wanting to be as violent. Even, even later, uh, I mean, it's definitely based in fear, but when the guy is like, the other guy, Stav, Stav, or whatever. Stiv. Stiv. And he's like, oh, uh, Osha, kill those wolves. She's like, no, kill them yourself. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm like, close to uh, she also, uh, her fight with Rob, I think, is interesting. The fact that, I mean, like, she's a spear wife, so she fights with a spear, obviously. But, like, in her fight with Rob, neither, it seems, really goes for a killing blow. Yeah. Or at least, I mean, I'm not so sure about that, but she does hold her own with Rob. Yeah. Who is a trained... Right, exactly. Like, yeah. So, like, her her battle prowess is, is on display here. Mm-hmm. It's our first uh, on-page, I believe, um, display of a female warrior. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, like you said, holding their own. Oh, and yeah, and here, Chelsea, on 404, she says, Off the horse and throw down the sword. We'll thank you kindly for the mountain for the venison, and you and your brother can be on your way. Mm. Now, who knows if she would have stepped stick to that or if Stiv would have been like whatever we'll kill him anyway but she is at least saying here Mm -hmm. we'll let you go Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we just want your stuff so yeah definitely I definitely did the same thing paid attention to what she specifically had to say in this group of wildlings and she seemed like she was the most uh, redeemable Mm -hmm. of them Um, before we break down the fight uh, I want to talk about Rob and Bran's conversation when they're off on their own Um, yeah where Rob talks about how he, he, I never know how much to tell you, Bran. I wish you were older. And Bran responds, I'm eight. Eight isn't so much younger than 15. I'm heir to Winterfell after you. I think that's an important thing that's said. Um, and then when, uh, then they have their conversation about what happened. And I think it's interesting that Rob is reaching out to Bran. He doesn't have to tell Bran this stuff. I think it's something that he really wants to share with his brother and he's looking for counsel from someone that he he's looking for counsel from a stark mm-hmm. mm. yeah, i think and it and it's 
he really wishes... It, when he says, I wish you were older, I think what he's saying is, I wish you were Ned. Yeah. <laughs> you know. it's, it's partly a matter of respect. It's partly a matter of him wanting his brother's counsel. But I think it is something that he thinks of that he's... He's telling him in a moment when she's experiencing some, some joy, he's smiling, he's, he wants to race. Like mm -hmm. He's loving being on a horse, and Rob kind of knows that he's going to spoil a little bit of that, and it does, but I think he feels that Bran should know. Do you yeah. guys think he's missing John? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I, I think, too, he wishes Bran was older just for the sheer fact that he wouldn't have to put on as much of a face, you know? Oh, sure. Like... Yeah. Like here he is riding through the winter town and uh, they, the others, the folk bend the knees yeah. to him and Rob greets each of them with, with a, a lordly, lordly nod. nod. Yeah. yeah. Like Rob, I love Rob. I like him. I wish he had a better time than he did, but he is, he's so stiff. Yeah. He, he very much. He's playing a part. He's playing I, a part that by rote. I think you know? he mm -hmm. wants to grieve and he can't. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he's uh, like Lynn S says, he's so alone at yeah. this point. Like, there's no one he can. Talk yeah. To. And I bet, too, that even though, you know, he has Theon, I don't think he thinks he can show any weakness or emotion in front of Theon. For sure. No, the, their relationship seems a lot more at, at uh, arm's length than I kind of remembered it being. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he talks in the bottom of 400 when, when he's talking to Bran about what he should do. He says, Theon thinks I should call the banners. Um, and they're talking, you know, about like, oh, only the Lord can call the banners. Bran says, does Maester Lewin say you should call the banners? And, uh, Rob says, I listen to him. I listen to everyone. And that's really such a, a hallmark, I think, of Rob's character throughout his arc is that he listens to everyone, sometimes to his detriment. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if that's a function of, uh, not having anyone above him to tell him otherwise at such a young age. Like, he didn't have anyone, he, maybe he missed the lesson where Ned could have been like, but at a certain point, you gotta make your own call, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. But uh, even even so, I think I think at a certain point he, he does with Catelyn and with Jane Westerling. And well, right. He makes a call that he's set in. But, uh, you know, Rob does seem to admire Theon and enjoy his company, Bran notes. Although yeah. Bran had never warmed to his father's war. Nobody likes Theon except No one except likes Rob. Theon. John doesn't like him. Like, John hates him. I think Rob sees him as, like, a cool older guy. Sure. Yeah, because oh, yeah. the age like, difference is much he's more. He's talking yeah. about, he's Adoration. like, this one time I had a threesome, and he's like, not in front of my little brother. Yeah, <laughs> like, but tell me about it later. Yeah, because, yeah, <laughs> like, uh, if anyone just hasn't been around or didn't yeah. remember, it, Theon's five years older Theon's than Theon's, like, Theon's the like guy. 19, 20. Yeah, yeah, Theon, like, has a fake ID and can, like, <laughs> buy beer for yeah. Rob. You know, like, he's, he's got, like, that. a shitty mustache. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> I think that's how I think of their relationship, <laughs> at least. Theon wears sunglasses inside. <laughs> yeah, but Rob, like, knows that he's kind of a bad influence. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Freya asked, is this our first mention of Dark Wings, Dark Words? No. No. Oh, shit. No. Okay. We've had it a bunch. Yeah, uh, the first time, I think, was a Catelyn chapter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but this is this might be the first time that Bran says it, but no, we've had it a bunch. I love that expression. I say it all the time in life. Page, he does. <laughs> Page 400, uh, for once Greyjoy did not smile. His lean, dark face had a hungry look to it. Mm -hmm. Greyjoy, Theon wants war. He, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Bran mentions somewhere in this chapter that, oh, bottom of that page, not mm -hmm. so long ago, the thought of Rob calling the banners and riding off to war would have filled him with excitement, but now he felt only bread. Dread? Not bread. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bran... Bran is, is matured enough to realize that, oh, war isn't necessarily a fun, exciting thing. I, maybe I don't want this, like, glorified thing to happen, but Theon still wants it. Well, I think Theon, too, is looking for something to prove him, some way to I prove himself. I was just going to say that. Definitely. Yeah. He wants to, like, show everyone yeah. that he is capable, and he does at the end of this chapter. Because he, in this situation that he's in, like, as a ward, as a hostage, and, like, forgive the, this is, like, a little on, on the nose, but he is kind of castrated, in a sense. <laughs> like, he is so impotent as, like, a ward. Yeah, he has to, like, my lord, like yeah, you know, like give the that sword. sucks. Yeah, and the way that he, the way that he does come to aid later is so arrogant. Like <laughs> oh when, my god, his, yeah. Sarah Shaggy yes. said, "Theon's the college kid still coming to high school party." Yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Um, <laughs> but, but I don't know. 
I, he, but, but he's he's so confident in his, his abilities as an archer that mm. he ignores all of the th all the possibilities that Rob talks about. But I disagree I, with Rob's chiding. I was I, I wanted sure, to talk about that. Sure, I, I think you're right. I, okay, Chelsea, yeah, go ahead. Because okay, what do we think Rob is actually upset? about here. He's that actually he upset that he himself. left Bran Exactly. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's true. He's, he's not, projecting. He's yeah. projecting hard. He's yeah. not yeah. actually thinking, oh, what if you shot Bran? <laughs> or what if this happened? Like, I think he's just mad at himself and is sure. mad that Theon had to step in and yeah. save. He says it like, how would I know that you'd leave him alone? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And like, especially while Rob already has all this pressure to be like the man of the and house and like, Theon has to step in and like. Let's not ignore the fact that Rob just killed a guy. Yeah. Like, oh, that's probably... the first person he's killed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's good if we always note the first time someone kills someone, because Tyrion had his first kill mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on the, the way to the Eyrie yep. yeah. in that fight. And, I mean, that's a big thing. Like, even in this society and this culture where death is commonplace, the first time you kill someone has to be something you remember Well, it's forever. also something we have to look at as a characterization piece. How does this character react to killing somebody? Yeah. Because you look at, you know, you look at someone like the... We talked at length about the Hound's reaction to killing Micah and, and how you could interpret that passage. Yeah. And I think it's important to note the, the kind of fury and rage that, that Rob is displaying here when he's chewing out Theon after having just killed somebody. And I think that it's, it's something that he doesn't take... Rob, throughout his story, does not take killing lightly. And I think often he defers to Grey Wind to do it for him. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know. I, uh, Chelsea teased it a little bit at the start of this analysis of this chapter, but God, that description of summer. I know. Is, I, yeah. I, I underlined it and said, wow. 406. 406. In that moment, Bran saw everything. Summer was savaging Haley, pulling glistening blue snakes from her belly. Her eyes were wide and staring. Bran could not tell whether she was alive or dead. Jesus. Yeah. I think it's really important and a great choice by George here um, to use their names. Yes. Like, these are enemies, they were trying to hurt Bran, yeah. but, but he was savaging Haley, not the, the other female woman. wilding, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I like that when the rest of the guardsmen show up, they have a strange pale look to their faces, and Joseph has to run over and puke in the bushes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even Maester Lewin seems shocked, but then he gets his shit together because Lewin's the man. Yeah. Lewin is the man. I like him more in the show, just because mm. his actor is so... So good. Oh, God, that guy's great. Yeah. Um, Cry every time. We get a, I mean, we still have that great moment. Yeah. We'll get to it. What's up? Oh, I just had a couple things from earlier in the chapter. Sure. I, I like that uh, there's a line that Bran knew this would, but he had been so long confined to Winterfell that he felt as though he were seeing it for the first time. Just his experience of mm -hmm. being out again. I like that uh, George takes time to have him really see and hear and smell when he's been cooped up in Winterfell for so long. Yeah. Studying the silvery web of an empress spider. I really like, uh, I really like Bran when, when uh, Stiv uh, tells Rob to kill the wolves. Bran's knowledgeable enough to know that if Rob did kill the wolves, he would kill them both anyway. Mm-hmm. You know. Wait, Summer's a girl? I don't think so. No, I don't think Summer's I don't, a girl. No. Uh, Paige, why are you thinking Summer's a girl? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just curious. Because of the name? Yeah, I think she's a... Yeah. Um, Boy. Yeah, Boy. Bran is smart. Like, that's absolutely what would have happened. Yeah. Why 100%. would they let them go? Sure. I think Rob knows as well, but, but it, you know, we're in Bran's POV, and, and Bran's eight, and he's, he, you know... I'm sorry, what? I, I missed because the if, Summer's a girl. Okay, if, if Rob gives in and kills the wolves as part of the deal, oh, like, yeah. okay, we can go free now, like, they, yeah. they would just kill them. Anyway. Oh, for yeah, sure, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, and I like that Rob is reluctant to kill Osha. Yeah, uh, and maybe Clarence it's... just pointed that out in the chat. Yes. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know if it's Rob's thoughts on killing or if it's the medieval, like, this is a woman, we shouldn't kill a woman, which, you know, she's a spear wife, so. I think it's an, I think it's a, it's a like, a, this is a stark honor kind of thing. Like, she's surrendering, she's mm -hmm. a prisoner. Mm -hmm. They also want to question her. Yeah. Like she broke no oaths. Sure. You know. 
But he, but he does say she's a woman. That's the reason oh. he gives mm-hmm. for not wanting to kill her. Sure. So. I don't care about that. What? Summer doesn't give a shit about that. <laughs> no, no, Summer does not. Summer's really. just after those pale blue snakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yum, uh, yum. yeah, Theon wants to kill her, of course. It's, that's Theon's M.O. Just do the most brash thing possible. And Oh, boy, I just realized Theon is like, give her to the wolves. Yeah. And yeah. who does that remind you of? Oh, yeah. Someone uh, who really likes giving... Feeding women to Feeding women to, to dogs, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, nice. Good call. Um, so some some north of the wall stuff. A couple of these people are deserters from the Night's Watch. So they're yeah. black. Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think that's uh, the case in the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also I wanted to bring up what Alicia Carter mentioned earlier mm-hmm. that uh, she was questioning the fact that they mention that a Stark would be a good hostage for Benjen Stark, which means either they've been south of the wall long enough not to have heard the news, and or. Benjen Stark's not with the Wildlings. Oh, yeah, that's a... Wherever he's at. I think they probably aren't aware that he's... I don't think they're aware that he's missing, because they talk about him as if he's still, like, a presence on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, would they know otherwise if he were missing? Well, if, presume, if they're, if they, I don't know what the timeline is. Oh, the two Night's Watch dudes. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 So, uh... um, Anything else? Any other thoughts on this chapter, guys? I think it's a it's a very exciting chapter. Um, I like the characterization that we get of, of Rob and Theon. Um, the whole like Benjamin Stark thing that stuck out to me because I was listening to the audiobook mm. and I was expecting who says it the, like it, uh, Osha. Where they talk? I think Osha's like oh they'd be it'd be good to have a hostage that's the like the kin. That's the kin of Benjamin, and I'm expecting like Eddard because naturally a character would associate brand. but then i'm like oh like to the wildlings and people on the wall like the westerosi houses don't matter don't matter at all everything stops at the wall yeah yeah so i thought it was interesting that that was like the reason that so benjamin's probably like second only to mormont to the wildlings as far as like yeah. important westerosi yeah. people yeah but probably they know about benjamin even more because he ranges because he's a ranger yeah and he'll he's go first out first ranger i mean he's benjamin stark's like up there with like corn half hand like oh yeah yeah Oh yeah, Corn Half Hand. Yeah. They, they know yeah. and respect. Yeah. Uh, guys, oh. you, want, you want to hear a real uh, shitty joke? Yes. 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 All right. So, uh, are we human or are we Brand's horse? God, oh, that's so good. Oh, that's not, Jesus. Not, are we Brand's horse? Edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we Brand's Never. horse. <laughs> oh my God. Oh hey, uh, Rob. Tells everyone to hack off the heads of the deserters and send them back to the wall. Yeah, it's a little fucked up. Like, no, damn, I, no, I think that that's that's, that's a thing? procedure. Oh, is it oh. just to let them yeah. know that they got them? Yeah. Oh, oh did, that did job. Ned send? Yeah. Uh, I think so. Did oh. Ned send? Like, because deserters deserter? are Willard? beheaded. Oh, was it Willard? Like, who has to oh. bring the heads? Uh, you know. Uh, or was Will. It? Will. No, no, it's Wait, Garrett. Not. Garrett oh. is the in the in the books. That's right. Yeah. 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 But like. Who has to bring the heads to the wall? Like, like that sucks. Like I feel like you would just go crazy. Ball. It'd be like you and like a bag of heads, and I feel like you would just kind of <laughs> like talk to them yeah. like in Sin City. For sure. <laughs> <My> yes. <laughs> exactly. You get all the way up to the wall, drop them off, come back down. Here's some more heads. Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah. This is just the head job. guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Steve will be by on Tuesday to get the heads. Yeah. But, but then he gets an underling, and he becomes the head head guy. Oh, oh. Yeah. Joel, that's a funny joke. <laughs> so, you know, not as good as mine. Do we want to move on to Tyrion? Let's move on to Tyrion. We have two yeah. chapters left. Tyrion's is definitely the bulk of the remaining pages. Ned's is yeah, a little Ned's baby is chapter, very but short. Ned's is very short. T-Y-R-I-O-N. Not Tryon. Tryon. And which one is it? Five. Five. Yeah. Here we go. Guys, the sky cells are so fucking crazy. Yeah. The blue is calling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just put his hands out. Oh, there's the blue. Oh. Yeah. So in this chapter is Tyrion in the Sky Cell. He's got Mord, the potential Lord, Mord. beating the crap out of him. Mord. And then, oh, he also does a little bit of a flashback recounting his encounter with uh, Liza and Robert that landed him in the Sky Cell. Mm-hmm. And then finally he talks his way out, goes and talks to Liza and demands a trial. By combat. Yeah. And as the chapter continued, I was like, oh, well, do we get the trial by combat in this chapter? No. But no, this chapter. Uh, I thought we were so going close. to. Yeah. But, like, it's uh, like, <laughs> this chapter ends with a damn act out. <laughs> like, it's such a button. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah, in the show, it happens pretty immediately. Yes. But <laughs> Damn it, in the book, they take a day or two. Um, oh, and also we get a crucial reveal, at least for me, of the fact that uh, Tyrion does know that Jaime or Cersei most likely sent the cat's paw assassin. No. I don't think that's true. I think he, it's him realizing the opposite. I think he he knows that some he knows that that's maybe the cause or why. Yeah, I think yeah. he's realizing like okay, it doesn't make sense for it to be either of those two because right. they're in, not that stupid. In yeah. contrast, like sending someone some, stupid did it. In contrast, sending some oaf with a stolen knife after Brandon Stark struck him as unbelievably clumsy and wasn't that peculiar. Come to think of it. Tyrion shivered. Now there was a nasty suspicion. Perhaps the direwolf and the lion were not the only beasts in the woods. And if that was true, someone was using him as a cat's paw. Tyrion Lannister hated being used. Do you Wait, remember so who I'm, it was? So I'm getting yeah, confused. Do you know now. who it was? This is a this is a well, no, yes, it's but, messy. Yes, but I'm so I'm confused because I thought that there were two different people sending. Oh, wow. Yeah, the, I think the cat's paw dagger and the assassination attempt on Bran is the messiest mystery in both book and show. Yeah, it's the show. Co- I think it, it just gets dropped. It does just get. Dropped. I really thought that it was them cleaning up their mess, but you, he has he has reached from all the way down there to send an assassin. Wait, who do you think it was? Think I would it think, think it would be Littlefinger. No, it was not Littlefinger. It was not Littlefinger. And it's not. It's not Littlefinger. And it's not Jamie or Cersei. Nope. No. no. What? Yeah. What? Oh, this is uh, great. I don't want to tell you. Yeah. Now. Let's just wait. don't tell me. It's not a. But now I'm confused. It's, it's not still, that it's exciting. So messy. It, and it is comes very up in messy. like the fifth book, maybe. And the, no, it's early. Oh, it's third book, probably storm. But it's it's just it's frustrating because it's like the reasoning for it is really flimsy. Yeah. And it's it's not the best it's mystery. It's not the best. Especially something that's kind of like crucial. That is the yeah. that is the like inciting incident for For Catelyn. Yeah. But then yeah. the solution to it's so unsatisfying. So just like shrug. I mean, it's not whatever. Yeah. Anyway, Tyrion is confused. He's just as confused yeah. as you are. Like Joel. he 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 does realize that there are other players in the game but maybe reaches the wrong or reaches oh. the right conclusion but maybe through the wrong method. Yeah, Phoebe. At least it, that's what I think. It gets Confirmed, I yeah. think in it the book. It's confirmed. Yeah, okay. For sure. The show. Yeah, hold off. Don't don't, yeah, don't type. spoil it. Don't don't spoil it. I'm not looking don't at the chat because it. okay. it's a. Uh... It is a throwaway comment, pretty much. Okay. It okay. Um. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Kind of the chapter starts with Tyrion starving but refusing to let the brute see him cringe. It's more that pride that he talked about in Catelyn's mm-hmm. chapter. Mm-hmm. Us Lannisters have a certain amount. Do you of pride. think he did walk up? Yes. Okay. I don't think so. Because I think in the show, if I remember correctly in the show, oh, instead he of has the line, I'll ride up in the, he has a line that I'll ride up in I, Honestly, I bet with the way he has to take, the, the pain he feels when he takes the steps in uh, Castle Black, that he would eventually, you know, uh, get on a, a, a mount or take the windshield. It's right in here, guys. To oh, his shame, sure. he had faltered during the last leg of their day-long climb up to the eerie, his stunted legs unable oh, to take Ron. him any higher. Oh. Ron had carried him the rest of the way, oh, and the humiliation right. poured oil mm. on the flames of his anger. This it. is this is Tyrion does not like to be humiliated. Obviously, you yeah. know, growing up under his circumstances, mm-hmm. I'm sure he faced a lot of humiliation, and being as intelligent as he is hated it Mm -hmm. so anytime he gets humiliated including Mord you know tossing his food out the sky cell that's just gonna make Tyrion so mad we (laughs) see him break yeah you fucking son of a pox ridden ass like damn that's that's yeah vulgar like and that's such a like so low yeah it's 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 beneath Tyrion's wit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that this is just like unadulterated rage Mm -hmm. yeah not wrapped up in a witty little bow Gunner's got some funny comments, man. Yeah, Gunner got Gunner a fire today. today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 20 stone, 280 pounds. What was that? Oh, oh, is that Mord size? That I really yeah, that's Mord. Nice. It's a big is guy. everyone big guy. clear on like what the sky cells look like? I love the, the honeycomb. I think it's amazing. The honeycomb. But yeah, wow. just like he was a so bee in a stone honeycomb. Because if you're confused on like what <laughs> they are, I could see how like what's going on here is confusing. Yeah, we get imagine. the description of them later than I expect. Like like. They're like cells, 
like in a row, like in a honeycomb. They're pack. in the side of the mountain. Yeah, I think yeah. they're really accurately portrayed in the show. They are, yeah. yeah the show sure. is like that's what they are. And like the slight slope. And then some are like more sloped than others, yeah. apparently, oh, right. which yeah. is really yeah. They're like haphazardly built. And yeah. he's and he said what? It's like five feet from the wall to the yeah, sky. He said it's small even for him. That means that like none of us could You're, lay no, down. We yeah. would have to. Yeah. We'd be like crouched in him. Yeah, you would. Go, you would go sleep. crazy. Like and, Tyrion's like in a fortunate position for the first time probably yeah. in his life because of his size. At least that's from the back wall to the sky. I don't know how wide it would be, but I'm assuming the wide is the slope. Yeah. So, I you think know. they're bigger in the show now. They're they're they are bigger. Oh, yeah, like, more is on the like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, And they're probably tall enough for Mord, someone like that, to get in there, but probably yeah. bending a little bit. Yeah. Also, mm. uh, the Eerie... Like, the Eerie is kind of weirdly terrifying. It is. Oh, like, I think for it's how, a creepy For how gorgeous place. it is, it's also terrifying. Like, the sky cells are terrifying. The moon door is terrifying. Yeah. The Although, fact that you're, like, so cut off from everything. I will say, moon door in the show, way Way cooler. better. Way, way better. Cooler. Way better. Because here in the, show, here in the book, the side of the, yeah. a narrow weirwood door stood between two slender marble pillars it's and crescent just, move. Yeah. yeah, it's just a... It's just a door and a wall. Yeah, door and a wall. And so, like, what? They have to, like... Push, push, push them. them. Yeah. It's kind of lame. Although it does make more sense uh, architecturally because how does a castle open in a mountain straight down. open straight down? I just imagine the castle like being like, like straddled yeah. over like a crevice Two peaks or something. Kind of, or yeah. A crescent. yeah. Okay. I think uh, I think there's been some fan art depicting that, kind yeah. of retconning that, yeah. or not retconning, just explaining it. Yeah. Uh, oh, and also, I like the fact that Mord knows how the sky cells work on people. Mm -hmm. The psychology he says, 20 days, maybe 30 days for you, then you'll fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I also love the when he's up and he confesses and lies. It's like, okay, mm. you'll, you'll le you can, you're free to go either way. But mm -hmm. it's just which door yeah. you're gonna take. It's a great which one. I think is so creepy. Like, yeah. yeah, you can't you can technically leave the Erie whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. You're free it's to the, escape yeah. from jail. The only dungeons where the prisoners were free to escape. Yeah. yeah. That's so creepy. I, love I, I also I love, love that he keeps insulting it like this isn't a proper dungeon, like in Casterly Rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um that's but, Lannister Pride. Yeah. O overall I like seeing it with Mord and with Lysa. How, yeah, again, we've had, and with Catelyn earlier too, we've had Tyrion in a privileged position and then kind of on his heels and understanding different people is what helps him understand their motivations and then work with those to mm -hmm. get what he wants. So Mord, it's gold. And then with the nobles around Lysa, it's the pride and honor, honor. Of, of them. Especially, uh, I think, in the Knights of the Vale where mm -hmm. the words of the the main house is as high as honor. Yeah. You know, appealing to, is this how justice is done in the Vale is such a brilliant strategy. And I think he's only able to take advantage of that knowledge after he acknowledges to himself, like, his that shitty position. Stuck. Yeah, yeah sure. because, like, I will remember this, he told them as they carried him off, and mm -hmm. so he did for all the good it did him. Right. That's him thinking, like, all right, man, you, you're you here. Like, that threat didn't mean anything because yeah. I'm still stuck here. Uh, I want to make note on 415 of the parenthetical. Um, he wondered what yeah. was happening beyond the walls, such as they were, of his cell. And I think this is George, no, like, being... Tyrion is the character that George writes the best, probably, I, I think. I think he knows most clearly who Tyrion is, and he's most successful at writing in Tyrion's voice. Um, it probably matches his own the most, mm -hmm. or what he wants to be, yeah. like the wit. I think you get like a, he would be Sam. Sure, but. you get some of that with Sam later too, but in a more deprecating way. I yeah. think the, the Tyrion is who he wants to be. The brilliance of yeah. Tyrion, I think, really mm -hmm. comes out in. And in, to be fair, you gotta be that smart to write that. Smart. Sure, I mean, yeah. well, there's no doubt that George is a smart guy, oh, but for sure. um, I think that uh, the use of a parenthetical like that is such a, a, a good. Um, like when we're looking at the language and the actual like physical words of the sh of, of the book, um, I think that's a very clear uh, piece of evidence as to how, like this is this this is the character he knows how to write. Like this is yeah. the you know. 
But, uh, and then later on that page, I really like when he's trying to suss out who it was. He talks about uh, Circe and Jamie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. His sister was not without a certain low cunning, <laughs> but her pride blinded her. Nailed it. Uh, and then... <laughs> Jamie was even worse. She would, well, oh, Circe sorry. would see the insult in this, not the opportunity. So Circe uh, doesn't see the forest through the trees. And I think that's... We're only going to get more and more of that as we go on with Cersei. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, Jamie was even worse. Rash and headstrong, quick to anger, which we just saw in the chapter with yeah. Ned. We just yeah. saw that, so we may get Cersei's uh, cleverness, or herself thinking herself clever mm-hmm. in a minute. Oh, we will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I lo- yeah, I, I just love him thinking through the kind of small mind of Mord. Like, <laughs> just the line of, he's listening. Listen, he's okay. listening. I've gotten through to this man through this. I, and I All like, right. too, like, some illiterates hold writing in contempt. Oh, I love like, that. But some think it has this special power. Like, I love that. That's a great detail, putting yourself in the world of people who can't read. And then I think on 416, this is the first and only use of the word cat's paw <laughs> to describe the uh, failed yeah. assassin. Oh, mm. okay. Um, perhaps I could be wrong with that, but I just I underlined it not, nonetheless because I know that we had a discussion about. And it. now it's traveled all the way to Game of Thrones Clue, where it's <laughs> named on the card the Cat's Paw Assassin Dagger. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of just Tyrion being insightful, knowing people. Like you said, uh, she had summoned her knights and retainers to hear his confession as he had hoped. He Lynn wants there Corbray to be an audience. Is there. Lynn Corbray, he'll become important later, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, and the he, Royces. Royces, oh, is... is uh, Bronzeon's not there. Oh, man, where is he? What's he doing? He was at the turning of the hand. Oh. Him and his son. Sir Albar Royce. Also, uh, his confession isn't as fun as in the show. No, no. it's no. so like, great in the show. He's got yeah. that emotion going yeah. on. When <laughs> Peter Dinklage, too, just crushes that scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wonder if any of that was improv. Maybe, because, like, it's not in the book, so Mm -hmm. it's potentially improvised. Uh, We get Catelyn um, Mm. kind of trying to step in and be, like, try to kind of rein back on (laughs) things. Yeah, because Liza, like... This was a mistake. (laughs) Because Tyrion will just, like, play off of Liza. And Catelyn's definitely smart enough to know uh, that, like, Tyrion knows that. Like, she spent so much time with him. She's like, yeah, if, if Liza's, like, Liza's just going to keep feeding into Tyrion's. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's just put a stop to this. Oh, thanks, Black Star, for pointing out that Cat's Paw was said at least once. Oh, thanks. Before this. Um, but no, uh, this is not saying that Tyrion is the Cat's Paw. No. He's saying, how could they think me a ta- Cat's Paw or whatever. I think it's interesting. Tyrion says he was highborn, the son of the most powerful lord in the realm. Is that is that just objective? Tyrion Lannister is or Tywin, Tywin Lannister is the most powerful lord in the realm. I'd say so. He's the richest and he's the most cunning. Yeah, but does that make him the richest? Definitely. I guess his daughter is the queen. So his daughter is the queen. He command. He's warden of, of the west, and he's a brilliant military tact- tactician. Former hand of the damn king. Yeah. <laughs> Twice. Mm-hmm. Or, right? No. Not yet. No. Not yet. Sorry. Okay. Anything else? Oh, yeah, Lynn Corbray is calling himself the surest sword. But no mention of Lady Forlorn, which I thought was interesting. Who? What that? Oh, That's his, his sword. sword. Oh. Oh, yeah, we get that next time with the battle, I think. Oh. oh thanks. Yeah. Joel read ahead. I did. I did. Some poor Sir Vardis. <laughs> oh, Vardis. Yeah, but he has no humor. So. Yeah. Yeah, but he. He's like, why are you making me do this? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't want to This fight is just a sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, yeah, Bronn. Then Bronn steps in. I'll stand for the dwarf. Cool. Yeah. I, I really think up. it's interesting, though, the timing of, of Bronn's, uh, like, uh, volunteering mm-hmm. um, after Servardus's name. When Servardus is described as an old man, like, he's totally just like, oh, okay, I can take this guy. Like, if it was... If was it, he, is he described as an old man? Yeah, I think um, mm-hmm. in the Catelyn chapter, if not this one, Servardus Egan. Oh yeah, because he's the one who like helps Cat up out of the cart. And he's described as like an older man. Oh okay. And I think it's interesting. Mm. Like if Lynn Corbray or or the younger Royce had been named, would Bronn have been like, eh, I don't know about that. Not out of any like fear, just out of just out of self preservation. Yeah, exactly. Like it's not worth it. But yeah. this guy steps in. Okay, I can take. I this can guy. take this guy. And then maybe like the gamble is worth it. 
if I do this, then I'll, Tyrion will owe me. Yeah. Whereas before, it's like, yeah, Tyrion might owe me, but, but it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good call, man. Um, just you, something to think about with Bronn's character. Because book Bronn, different from show Bronn. Less charming? Less, well, less charming. <laughs> um, and I think they're, they're not super bros. Mm-hmm. Less super bros. Less, yeah. less best bros. Yeah. Any other notes on this chapter, guys, before we move on to our final chapter? I, I don't understand how every week we hit two and a half I hours. Know. So I know. I thought perfectly. we were going so well. I know. I thought that we were going to be like, oh, it's a short one today. But no. I mean, it might still be 15 minutes shorter than usual. This is a very this short chapter. This is a really short chapter, yeah. and I think it's covering a lot of stuff. That's Got some meat here. We know. Well, we'll yep. see. <laughs> I would lo- okay, so on to what uh, did did you already change it? Yeah, it's, it's just, just gotta catch up. On to Eddard Ten, aka Tower of Joy. And just as someone who listens to a lot of podcasts and who reads a lot of stuff, I feel like I have read these first two pages oh, a thousand so times. Many times. Just yeah. the dialogue between mm-hmm. the uh, between Ned and the Kingsguard members. Mm-hmm. It, some of which is lifted word for word for the show, although there's a lot more in the book. Yeah. Yeah, how'd you feel about that, the elaboration? Honestly, uh, it was interesting encountering this after the show to see the differences and that there's more of an intent from Ned to understand why the Kingsguard are there, naming all the places that they were not. Yes. But otherwise, I mean, it's a pretty great scene in the show. No, it's a good scene. It's a great scene in the show. It gets cut off. Uh, I mean, there's more. It gets cut off. Yeah, we don't we don't get the full scene yet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because the show scene has a huge reveal. Yeah, the reveal we don't get, but even even a description of the battle, I would have liked to have read uh, about Sir Arthur Dane in action. Well, Well, that might be coming. Oh, it might be. Maybe. Well, I don't know. But yeah, this is this is not. I mean, because remember, this is season one. Oh, for sure. So I, I think it's important to note in the descriptions that we get in the books versus the show, we, we really get, I think, the sense of respect that Ned has for these men. Yeah. Like, no, Ned said with a sadness in his voice. Oh, now hmm. it ends. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that he describes uh, Arthur Dane had a smile on his lips, Sir Oswald went on one knee sharp, like the detail that he goes into, and the way that he describes fierce old Sir Gerald Hightower, comma, the white bull, comma, Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Like, <laughs> Titles, titles, titles. Yep. Like, these mm-hmm. aren't just three guys that he fought. Like, it's, yeah. you know, the white enameled helm, the black bat of his house on his wings for Oswald Went, who's, like, the, the lesser of the, yeah. of the three. It's telling that they are not shadows. They are as clear as they were when he saw them in person. And the rest of the men who were with him, many of whom were dead, are just shadows. Yeah, and I wonder if Holland Reed is really a shadow to him. Because you'd think he would be important enough, especially since he survived and he mm-hmm. presumably had more contact with Ned after this incident, that he would remember his face. And maybe Ned just doesn't think about that. No, no. I, I love uh, they were seven against three. Yeah, it's repeated a few mm-hmm. times. There were seven facing, facing three. three. Yeah. It's haunting. In the I, dream I, as it. Yeah, these, like, these broken sentences, in the dream as it had been in life. Mm-hmm. Like, is that mm-hmm. even a complete sentence? Mm. No. No. Because this is, a, this is a dream. This is a haunting dream. Yeah, it's Gray wraiths on horses made of mist. Mm. So, such great imagery here. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really haunting scene. I mean, like, we've, like you said, James, like we've gone over it a bunch. Um, we've seen it on the show now. But to, the Tower of Joy and Ned's, Ned's dream of it is something that is really, it's an image that really sticks with me from, from reading the books. Um, I love the dialogue. I yeah. love the dialogue. I like that Sir Willem Derry gets a uh, mention, and he was he was an important figure in Danny's life. In, yep, mm-hmm. because the only he, father figure that she really had. Yeah, because yeah. he flees to Dragonstone with uh, Queen. I always forget her name. Oh, uh, Rayella. Yeah, Rayella Ray- and Viserys, right. and uh, he he accompanies them to the Free Cities, right? Yeah, I mean, he helps them dies, escape. But, yeah, he helps them escape and lives with them. It, it's, it's not until he dies that uh, Viserys is kicked out of Bravos and becomes the Beggar King. Yeah. Because I, I, which makes me assume that Willem Derry offers them some legitimacy, mm. being a knight yeah. and uh, speaking out for them. Mm. But mm-hmm. he's gone. But he is not of the Kingsguard. 
sir. But he is a good man and true. So mm -hmm. they hold him in high regard, but they obviously yeah. hold the Kingsguard in an important position. And the Kingsguard does not flee. So they are at this tower. They are protecting. Protecting something. Rhaegar is dead. Yeah. yeah. Eris yeah. is dead. Rhaegar is dead. So, like, why would they be? Yes. Yeah. Why are they here and not with Viserys and Daenerys? And the queen. Yeah, right, exactly. So they are protecting someone of royal lineage. Yes. Who presumably. would have a better claim. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I really love the way that they kind of speak as one. Mm -hmm. With yeah. the Kingsguard, Sir Gerald pointed out the Kingsguard does not flee. Then or now, said Sir Arthur, we saw a vow, explains old Sir Gerald. Like, I love that they speak this way, that they are kind of parts of a whole. We got people asking, was it ever explained why it was called the Tower of Joy? Yeah, Rhaegar, Rhaegar names it. that. It's like a, yeah. it's like a vacation home. Yeah, and he names it the Tower of Joy because he had a lot of joyful moments there yeah. with Lyanna. Lyanna, yeah. But yeah. for Ned, it was a bitter memory. Yeah. Yes, and he even pulls down the castle. I love that detail. I didn't remember that mm. yeah, until that he, this read through. He tears down the castle to make Karens for the dead. That's crazy. Yeah, he just destroys that tower. And we find out later too that he, when he takes, when he returns, Dawn. Like, there's just so much. Yeah, Dawn's here, the blade pale as milk glass. Mm -hmm. That is not the case in the show because... They, they couldn't... The director said that they had no way of making it look good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's supposed to be unearthly because it's made out of meteorite. Right. But Dawn is not Valerian steel. It is uh, made from a meteorite He that said... Uh, the director said in an interview, I think, that they, they tried making it out of something and it didn't work as a sword. The and people who made the sword wouldn't do it because they it, wouldn't would look do, bad. it would look bad. It like would look like painted a painted it. sword. Yeah. And they couldn't do it with CG because it would look like a lightsaber. Abigail Forney does not like the uh, <laughs> Rhaegar and Lyanna being consensually I um. I think you gotta let that one go. <laughs> yeah. I think that there's there's plenty of evidence now. <laughs> If you finished all of the books, uh, to let that one go. <laughs> so diplomatic. <laughs> like, uh, I respect the position, but... Uh, I think it's telling that as... I, I, mean, I think that's propaganda. As it is divided I think that's in the book. history is, is, is written by the winners kind of stuff. I mean, just from the show, I would know that the way uh, Oberyn puts it is that Rhaegar <laughs> was... What? She won't. <laughs> no, yeah, Russell, yeah. I won't. That's we fine. Should. We'll we'll eventually get we'll confirmation get one way or the other. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, nice yeah. it's. I. Uh, <laughs> if it were, if that were the case, if it was told as, uh, if if history was as Robert told it, that'd be super then sad. Then that sucks. Yeah. 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 And uh, maybe it's just my clouding of ha like liking Lyanna Stark as a character and liking John as a character that I don't want that to be the case. So And I sure. think based on what we know of Rhaegar so far. But but either way, yeah, I hope it's cleared up in the books and I hope that the show shows us some shows us what their relationship was like next You've been time. underlining things She's too been perfect. A, post it in our subreddit. We always sure. forget to plug this. On Reddit, which I, I feel like a lot of our audience isn't that familiar with. Mm. They're kind of not the same demographic. Yeah. But you don't, uh, go to reddit.com slash r slash practical folks. We have a subreddit devoted just to our channel and it's mostly, I would say, for book club and for uh, further discussion. So Abigail, I would love to see a post that you make in our subreddit with like, Abigail's uh, uh, case against Rhaegar. I would love to read that because mm -hmm. uh, I just want to, you know, we... Like if there's stuff I've been missing. Yeah, because we yeah. listen to a lot of the same We're thing. Not... So we we draw from the same well a Sure. Lot. So yeah. that's why that's, yeah. if we're in agreement on something, it's probably because we're getting the same information. But I would love to hear conflicting information. And, and Paige is saying, I don't think Robert's perspective is 100% reliable. It's not no. just Robert. Like we do get from other characters this this narrative of a kidnapping and a rape, and it won't let you do Reddit. No, no, I'll try. Um, but uh, so there's evidence on both sides, and it, and it's it's one of the best mysteries of of the series. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a. I don't think it's gonna let you do that URL. I'll try it. All right. I was able to put URLs in. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. So. Reddit.com well, well, we, we can't, we can't get in, We can't get into it now, yeah. Abigail. It, we, it's, we're already at almost two and a half hours. But yeah, thank you. Please, please post yeah, that. I would no, love to read it. We, for sure. That's... Um, I do like a storm of rose petals blew across a blood uh, streak sky as blue... Oh, I'm sorry. A blood streak sky as blue as the eyes of death. 
Now, is the blue of the eyes of death Descripting, uh, describing the sky or no. the, rose the roses. roses? Yes, and the blue roses. Blue are... roses. It's because uh-huh. Rhaegar named Lyanna the queen of love and beauty at the tourney, and he gave her a crown of blue, blue roses. roses. Yeah. Yes, and those blue roses are going to come to symbolize John. Yeah. Yep. A lot. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, very, cool. very fun thing to point out and look for anytime you get blue roses. Like, keep an eye out for that. Um, so yeah, he wakes up, the dream leaves him weak as a kitten. Oh, I'm sorry about, I thought you were about to say the dream weaver. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a dream weaver train. Uh, he's in a different tower. Um, po- uh. Was he not in the Tower of the Hand? Van Poole, no, he's in. As opposed to the Tower of Joy, he's in the Tower of the Hand. He's in the Tower oh, of the Hand. Yeah. Yeah. Van Poole, uh, says that he gave the, uh, Jory and the others over to the Silent Sisters to, to go north. Uh, with his Jory would want to lie beside his grandfather. It would have to be his grandfather, Ooh. for Jory's father was buried far to the south. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Martin Castle had perished with the rest. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, because he broke down the thing and made parents with them. Oops, not practical mm-hmm. folks. And already we're getting Ned being concerned about his daughters and saying that he wants his daughters kept safe. That's yeah, what, that's mm-hmm. his main concern. Prime concern, yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting, too, given the Tower of the Joy, that his prime, prime concern while lying in a sickbed is the protection of his children. Yeah, you know, he was dying. Everyone was dead around him, and he was dying, and he still crawled over to Jory. I think that shows him he's a very compassionate leader and compassionate father. Yeah, but what I mean is that, like, the, the parallel between him and Lionel. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robert's already drinking by the time he comes and visits. Yeah, God, Robert. God damn it, yeah. Robert. I fucking get it. Robert's I remember the first so time I watched the show being like, Robert's cool, man. It sucks that he died. And then just the more I paid attention, it was <laughs> yeah, like, Yeah, like, well, no, actually, no. though, Robert really sucks. <laughs> yeah, God, he has the line in this. Just, <laughs> I was always strong. No one could stand, oh, I guess I'm doing a voice. I was always strong. <laughs> no one could stand before me, no one. How do you fight someone if you can't hit them? Yeah, when like, he's, when he, after just after yeah. he, does he do that in the show? Does he hit Cersei? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because okay. the badge of honor, the, the way that Lena Headey read, uh, yeah. gives the badge of honor line is awesome. Yeah. 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 But, I just, like, further, you're seeing his flaws, and there's an incredible one here. He just doesn't know how to do this. Chelsea, you want to talk about Cersei's uh, gonna... skirts and mail line? Oh, oh yeah. What page yeah. is that on? That's 429. 429. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is such a runner with her. Like, she... <laughs> super resents the fact that she's a woman and she i guess you could say she tries to work within the confines of being a woman but not really i think she just uses her rage that she is a woman as like a tool you know Mm -hmm. she's not like aria where she's like a masculine woman but she she i think she tries in some ways to embrace the fact that she's not a man where she really hits home, especially with Sansa, that like one of her weapons is sex. Um, but yeah, I don't know, this is something good to look out for with her. This is like a constant runner. Yeah. And as the series progresses, we'll see her act out in ways that would, I don't want to say like are masculine, but are like stereotypically masculine, especially the way she uses other women. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. Her face was a mask, still and pale, betraying nothing. Maybe that's just Ned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whenever there's a, a thing in a Ned chapter of like someone's face being blank, I'm like, maybe. Like, yeah, maybe. Maybe it's just, just Ned. Yeah. Although, I mean, later Cersei's face was a study in contempt. I love that line. I love that line too. So good. And the, yeah, that's yeah. right before the you in skirts and me in mail. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, Robert fucking hits Purple her. Purple with but, rage. But she does not cry out. And I love, I love this description. All of this Cersei in this chapter uh-huh. is her as like this stone cold. Uh-huh. She's gonna take this shit. And yeah, and I love to. Uh, <laughs> I love too that when you think about this chapter, like she's so kind of the third wheel in this chapter, and she basically is just yeah. sent out of the room. Like, oh, the queen's tired. Please escort her out after uh-huh. she gets slapped in the face. Yet she's the only one who makes it out of those three, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, 
I think that's when she, and what Robert mentions, he's going riding tomorrow morning. Yeah. I think that's when she was like, it's yeah, like I'm no, going out on a hunt. I'm, I'm, real, I'm doing this. Like, yeah. if I wasn't sure. Now's the time. Now, yeah, no, yeah. He, he's dead though. Yeah, I guess poor timing with that slap, although I'm sure it wasn't the first time. Yeah. And she's seeing just how, with the two of them, how ineffective she is, because she's saying things that are true. Like, this person is not the hand of the king anymore. He's treating you with such, like, disdain, like, you are the king, and he's just openly in defiance of you. Yeah. Hey, did you guys notice this? Middle of 429, the king swirled the wine in his cup, brooding. He took a swallow. No, he said, I want no more of this. Jamie slew three of your men, and you five of his. Now yeah. it ends. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. 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 Same chapter. Ends. Same Come chapter. Yeah. He's like, now yeah. it ends. And I don't know what to make of that other than, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> a little star next to it. Oh, yeah, people discussing if Cersei actually wants to be a man. No, I don't think that's the case. No, she, I, wants, she, wants, she wants everything that comes with yeah. being a man. Yeah. yeah. And she just resents that she wasn't born one. And oh, yeah. she did not have Which the same it, freedom that Arya has had to exactly. be a woman differently. She's yeah. been very constricted by sure. her expectations in her role. I don't know. Maybe she does want, wish that she had been born a man. No, she does, but, but I'm like, saying there's a difference between her wanting to be born a man and her thinking, like, I am a man and I feel like I am one. Oh, okay. Yeah. I did see someone there's a, bring there's up a, a, a trans. Exactly. Oh, yeah. it's not, okay. no, I don't no. think it's that. I, I think, think it's that. just she thinks it's bullshit that she, she had to be. The, yeah. She, had she to identifies be, as a woman. Yeah, yeah. She had to be the twin yeah, that was a I, woman. I think being mm. a mother is a really important part of her character. Yeah, that's and I true. think that's why she attach is so hard to Jamie because he is a mirror of her. Yeah. If sure. she was a guy. Yeah, if she mm. had been born a male, she yeah. thinks she would have been Jamie. Uh we get Robert keep or Ned keeping his promise to the uh to mm -hmm. the whore about telling Robert about uh the oh. baby. Yep, he kept his promise. Kept his promise. Mm -hmm. He always does. Um I really liked uh, uh, the last page of this chapter. Rhaegar 1. Rhaegar 1. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't think well, we, we get from... Uh, I hope I didn't scare Abigail away with my assertion. I think she's off writing a, a yeah. detailed yeah. research paper. I she hope should. she is. Cause yeah. I'm, I'd be curious to, to see that argument. Because I, I, a lot of my con counter arguments come from much later books. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting Liana through different people, different images of her, through Ned and through Robert. I think Robert would be the same like nature is the same he would have been the same if he'd married liana but also we get the idea that liana wouldn't have married him and i think that's important and robert would never have been happy no matter what yeah mm -hmm. and then yeah the chapter ends with robert just demanding ned be hand of the king uh, threatening him into it because ned says uh ned's like no i'm not the hand and he says but the targaryen girl he brings that up why would you want me as a hand if you refuse to listen? And then Robert's finally just like, look, if you don't do it, I'll make Jamie hand of the king. And I think that's enough to that's make Ned. That's the surefire way to get yeah. Ned to do it. Yeah. That's Ned being like, oh, fuck. He just doesn't, like, there, there are questions of justice from Cersei and from Ned in this chapter. And Robert doesn't want to deal with any of it. Yeah. He, he wants it just to be done. Like yeah, because that's five. right. He doesn't want conflict. No, he, just he wants doesn't. It to be yeah, dominant. he wants the king's peace, and the king's peace is not about you know justice. Yeah, a uh, sword. Things to be sick. sword in the darkness has it right. I think she doesn't want to be a man. She wants to be an equal. Yeah, I think that's the best way of putting it. Also, yeah. Liz, why don't you uh, why don't you start heading over here? Because we're about to wrap up. <laughs> yeah, I want to play over. games. <laughs> yeah, come <laughs> over. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I also think it just in terms of Cersei wanting to be equal and wanting to use power that way, the books go into it a lot more heavily than the show does and in very explicit ways that I think are really disturbing. Yes. I mean, but we've that's... already got that little teaser earlier of how she killed those, had the babes mm -hmm. killed and sold the woman into slavery. Yeah, but that's going to be in like Feast. That's yeah. in like oh, forever. That's in like a decade. I'm so from pumped now. for feast. I yeah. love feast because it's so much. Cersei. We're moving. I mean, we're moving through. So, so we we've done six of these. Yeah. And we're halfway through the book, so if we we'll, if we've got another six, maybe less, mm. five, to get through game. Yeah. So that's it's, only another month and a half. Yeah. Um. And then we'll be on. And clash. then we'll be in in clash. And this. So what? We're we're looking what three months a book. Oof. Four at most. Uh, it's less than I kind of thought. Okay. Yeah. Storm's gonna be longer. 
We might have to start pushing them up to 80 instead of 70 pages. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so let's go. Well, 70 uh, pages lands us on a really nice note. It Oh, it's it, 500? It's 500, and yeah. it's the end of the Saris. Oh, like sweet. Oh, yeah, okay. So. Let's do that. So, <laughs> Catelyn, 7 to... To Daenerys, 5. Okay, I'll put that in here. Yeah, yeah. Spoiler please. alert. <laughs> yeah, the Sarahs ain't gonna Crown make it. Four I just watched that scene. I, I, I there was a it YouTube was so like good. link to yeah. it, and I just watched that scene again, and like, uh, that's some good acting by yeah. uh, Amelia Clark in that scene. Like, I'm not the biggest Amelia Clark fan, <laughs> but that's some good acting in that scene. And what's his face too, Jason uh, Momoa? Momoa, Momoa, yeah. Great. Momoa, Momoa, Momoa. So, that scene is so fucked up. <laughs> Like I remember. By Jane That's another scene where it just stands out to me of the first time I watched the I show. I was like, oh like, my what? god, what is this? That guy was a main character. I remember like watching that <laughs> episode. Cat was seven to Daenerys five. What season? In between what seasons did you start reading? Uh, I started mm. after season three. Okay. So same. We three started four, reading yeah, at was, the same time. We read time. it at the same time. That's great that you got to. Well, unless it was spoiled. I was not spoiled for me. It was spoiled for her. I had uh. stuff spoiled. I did a dumb thing. I don't know why I did. I, I had it. half of Here's that spoiled, <laughs> and so I, I feel you there. I was on Facebook, and someone was talking about how they were really excited for season three, and they, they mentioned something about the Red Wedding, and I thought they were referring to it as something that had happened. Or, like, I thought they were referring to past events. I was like, oh, I don't remember that, and I Googled it and was like, fuck. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. So that was really upsetting. Oh yeah, we'll do Q and A. Um, Q and A. I want to keep next, but I. Yeah, uh, I want to keep next week's assignment up though. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah, the next assignment is Catelyn seven to Daenerys five, and like we said, we think we're on for the next few weeks consistently. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I'll miss so one. Cool. Yeah, I'll miss two. You'll miss a couple. I'll miss of, what, probably What are you doing three. again? Yeah. Nothing important. Is there a, is there a color to the occasion? There it is. Oh. <laughs> Tully colors. Tully I color. got I got this mug for Erica, my soon to be wife, um, because our wedding colors are Tully colors. <laughs> <It's so good. laughs> was that on accident? It was completely on accident. That's funny. it was we were we were like filling out our guest list and like coordinating the Excel sheet and I was like, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, uh, I think Storm of Swords is Probably everyone's favorite. Yeah, for sure. It has it has a great blend. I mean, you can't top all the shit that happens in it. Although maybe we will with wins or dream. Yeah. Who knows? Man. <laughs> dream. Yeah, <laughs> dream. If that ever happens. It's an appropriate title. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. A dream of a that. dream of spring. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, what? Yeah, we'll have a little table with a live stream going on. <laughs> oh, yeah, a live stream table. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's sure, the thing yeah. that happens sometimes, the Skype table. The new girl. She'll yeah, love that. Yeah. I was going to say happy endings. Okay. All right, guys, what are, your, what are your cues? Somebody had a question much earlier. Oh, uh, I forget who it was. If you're still here, please remind us. Someone asked when we were talking about the Blackfish earlier, was Littlefinger inspired by the Blackfish to take his own sigil? Huh. I don't. I feel like that's probably a wider thing than just those two individuals and one of them being influenced. But oh, I guess because they had a relationship. They did have a relationship. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. I like that. I kind of wonder what the Blackfish knows if he talked to and listened to the problems of Lysa and Littlefinger. Whether he could have seen anything growing between them, and if he ever thought that anything, you know, continued into the future. I wonder. I wonder, I'm curious in future events what he might know. Yeah. I don't know. If he's at the Eerie and knowing sort of how plots are happening. I was, when we were reading the chapter about how, like, yes, even uh, Baelish talked to him, yeah. it made me think of if we'll ever have a Blackfish Baelish encounter. And I don't think we will. I don't think so. Assuming the book follows the show. Uh, no. I, it probably won't happen. Oh, <laughs> Abigail's already over there. I really didn't mean to offend Abigail. I respect your differing opinion very nice. much. Yeah, reddit.com slash r slash practical uh, folks. Check that out. Um, oh, shit, I was going to say something. Oh, as far as the taking your own sigil goes, Blackfish takes 
his house symbol and just kind of modifies it. Mm -hmm. Baelish takes just an totally entirely makes. new symbol. And I think maybe that gave him a spark of an idea. Of like, oh, hey, he can take his own symbol. But I think the more important thing about Baelish is breaking off his past previous family his yeah. low-born previous family and starting a new house and being the head of that because his previous of the baelish sigil was the titan Giant bravos, the, the head of the titan yeah. bravos because hmm. his his family came from bravos and so to just create the mockingbird which is entirely different yeah i think is more and about someone worse. asked why the mockingbird i think it might just be as simple as like emulating those around you to get to where you want to be mm -hmm. just for the job you want yeah. yeah, and no one, and it's uh, uh, unassuming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I yeah, think exactly. that's that's a big part of uh, of Littlefinger. No one expects. Yeah, like he's not coming mm -hmm. in like, hey guys, got my new sigil. It's like a sweet tiger. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it's a tiger holding a flaming sword. Yeah, yeah like it's, it's so it's fucking cool. It's his Trans Am with flames painted on the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It just sounds like like a Napoleon Dynamite drawing, you know, <laughs> but. Yeah, it's like, yeah, very unassuming. No one's going to... Oh, yes. Advice. Gunner, please picture me <laughs> while reading. Uh, nah. That's the creepiest thing you've said. You said some creepy shit yesterday. Oh, yeah. no. I think I need someone to make a super cut of all my creepy uh, looks into the camera from yesterday. So many. Oh, yeah. Seriously, it's me, and, right. it's me and Caitlin as Sansa sitting on the <laughs> side of the table, and we have our own camera. And whenever it's on us, it's just like... Mm. I missed some too. There were some. I was trying to catch them all, but yeah. I missed some too when I was cutting. It's a great one. Uh, cues, guys. We gotta. Um, well, as far as uh, picturing actors from the show. Uh, oh yeah. Do you guys? Megan Rich said. Do you guys yeah. picture actors from the show already? Mostly. Yeah, mostly. Joel? Yeah, yeah, almost entirely. Except uh, right now, Varys is the big exception. Because what? really, Carlo feels so good. Yes, though. but because of how much he changes costumes, no. oh, I, I started I to get a little Tom diffused. Lip with some stuff oh, with a beard on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I book Illyrio is different for me because the description yes. is so different. Oh, yeah, so I remember what he looks like. That's the thing is he's yeah. such a minor character in the show very, that it's easy to forget. He's a forgettable. Uh, set up to you know i've been trying um, to picture renly different just because he's described so differently. more like robert yeah, yeah. Um, i had a hard time picturing liza's actress because the physical descriptions are so, so different. different yeah no yeah. yeah because She's book liza is like, like really overweight fat. No, yeah. and well, that's show Liza is like really thin. Yeah, <laughs> but okay, that but yeah, she's not. And she job. has such a different like yeah. air to her. I think, but yeah, show Liza's great. She's if really Cersei married someone that sued her and treated her like the queen she thinks of herself as, do we think she would have turned out better, like a gentler, still devious? Probably. She, she talks, Honestly, maybe. She talks in her POVs when we ultimately get them about uh, wanting to be paired with Rhaegar. Yeah. yeah, she oh, had yeah. like she had such a thing for Rhaegar, yeah. like such Who a big didn't? crush on him. And then when she was betrothed, betrothed to Robert, she, she initially was... was like really into the idea mm -hmm. and thought he was super handsome and was like in love with him. And then he, on their wedding night, said Lana's name, and that was kind of that. Yeah, a her. fine number. But I, yeah, I think like well, I don't know because when you think about it, you have Jamie basically just kissing her heels for like their whole lives and what did that do <laughs> you know yeah. i don't know I, I think maybe for like a few months she would have been like a nice person but then would have fallen back into being a total dick yeah yeah <laughs> because that's just who she change. is i can't wait. you know love does not change yeah you can't change someone's you can't nature. change someone's nature yeah, so maybe i that's think a hint. the wise uh, wise words of lyanna stark so i, I yeah. cannot wait until we get jamie i'm so pumped i know i want more Lannisters. Uh, Alicia asked, what are your thoughts on Catelyn not considering herself a Stark until she feels the compulsion to tell Maya Stone the Stark's words, even though she's been married to Ned for 15 years? I think they've been a pretty placid 15 years. Yeah. Uh, you know, Theon, or, uh, the Greyjoy Rebellion aside, mm -hmm. and what, the Ninepenny Kings? Was that in there, or was that before? No, that's before. You're oh, yeah, thinking, that's uh, you're thinking, um, Kingswood Brotherhood. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but besides those minor incidents, it's been pretty serene in the kingdoms and i think that this uh maybe this tra like this whole uh, chain of events that's happening right mm -hmm. now is enough to like awaken kind of force stark her to world. identify with being a stark yeah well even like in one of the first chapters ned has to be like you're a northern woman like you've had northern mm -hmm. kids like 
I always tell you this. You're <laughs> north, like to, you're you're northern to us, but she never. I think it's just something that's so part of her her person, though. Yeah. I mean, the the Telly words are family, duty, honor. She's never gonna forget that. Also, maybe for the how how far has she or how often has she ventured south in the past fifteen years? I think probably very probably infrequently. Very little, she's probably just all, been chilling yeah. at Winterfell and. Here, she's finally thinking that after going down to King's Landing, interacting with Southern people, yeah. after having been, mm. like, inculcated. And she was in, in the Riverlands, too. She traveled. She, the Inn at the Crossroads is in the Riverlands. Yeah, so it's her visiting these old uh, places that she would have seen a lot as a kid and maybe realizing how much different she is now after spending so much time in the North and being mm -hmm. like, oh, I mm. am more Northern now after being down here mm -hmm. and seeing these uh, southern people. This is, such a, this is such a bad analogy, but maybe you'll all agree because we're all in the same situation. Sure. When I'm, oh. oops, that's my phone. <laughs> when I moved out here, I was like, I'm, like I'm a Michigander, I'm from Michigan. Mm -hmm. And now when I go back to Michigan, I'm like, oh no, I'm such a Californian. Like I don't, yeah, it's weird. It's I, feel like like I struggle with that for yeah. sure because I identify so much as a Michigander. I'm but when I, when I go back, <laughs> when I go back and I'm like, Freezing. I <laughs> yeah. hate that. Yeah. I yeah. When you go home, you're not. Or when you go back to Michigan, you don't feel uh, more out of place there than you do. Yeah, here. I feel like no. See, oh, now I'm I feel... excited by that weather. I love it. I love, no, I love the, the weather, weather too, the but like, people, like driving. The, all the, the oh, just I the love the driving there. there. Like, it's so much better than but But, uh, LA but living, I agree, but living out here has changed me. I'm a more aggressive driver. Like, <laughs> you, you have to be. You know, you're, you, it's a. Uh, Yes, uh, uh, Holy Reed 100% knows about John. He, yeah, yes. he does. That's it's stated. Very I think yeah. George has said that yeah. outright. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, if you could, this is a question I think we've asked before, but uh, Freya Morgan asks, if you could write any POV that wasn't in the books, which would it be? And this is a... Littlefinger. Yeah. This is a yeah. tricky question because we want to know Littlefinger and Varys, but they know too much. They know so much. Yeah. It'd be... Yeah. Um, I would really love... Uh, I would Howl really love, <laughs> yeah, Howlin' Reed. I would really love, like, uh, Mira, I think would be really interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You That'd know, be good. Like, her perspective on things. She I, has a rough time. Yeah, she has a rough time. What? How crazy would a Joffrey POV be? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, fucked up shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. like an American psycho. Yeah, point of view. Would, yeah, I wake up every morning. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, <routine>. right. <laughs> Eric Mishima, we all met at the University of Michigan. Yeah. We're all from different parts of the metro Detroit area, but we all met in college. Yeah. Uh, moved out here uh, sequentially. Within the last few years. Yeah. And yeah. Um, also, do you think, oh, yeah, did any of you have theories of the Tower of Joy in your first or second read? I didn't theorize anything yeah, the first I time I read either. through. I was just ingesting the information. I didn't even think of John's parentage as a mystery. It wasn't until after I finished the entire series and I went online and people were like, RLJ, and I was like, what? I, I <laughs> kind of sussed it out. I didn't have the words for it. I knew something was up, but I didn't, ha like, I didn't come to the R plus L equals J thing on my own, but I knew from reading the first book that something was up and it related to John. Yeah, there's enough thrown in your face like yeah. about Liana and something happening. Yeah, yeah, I guess my face was just numb. To all that, <laughs> yeah, there's so it. much going on. You had the whole Ned plot, and once once yeah. that is kind of you know what happens, you can focus on other things. Mm. Uh, since you guys like a restaurant, do you think of uh, Targaryen, Mac Lannis, Stark, Always Sunny? I don't know what that. Well, means. I don't know what that means. Wait, but hang sure. On. That sounds funny. Oh, that's oh, like Eric's the game of games, low. Charlie McDennis, oh. that they make up. Oh. So this would be the game of games within the game. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> uh, Eric's from Royal Oak. That's cool. There's I like nice. Royal Oak. Brewery. Who's closest to Royal Oak? Chelsea, Chelsea? probably. Yeah. Sterling Heights. Yeah, it's not that close Wouldn't though. It's still like half an hour. Farmington's but a you're, half hour. But you're west. Twenty minutes of him, right? And east. That's what, oh. I'm east. Yeah. I would be a Southern being so close yeah. to Royal Oak, Ohio. Yeah. yeah. Um. Anything else, guys? I'm I'm hungry. Yeah, I think we're about it's done. About that time. About that oh, time. we didn't get a Lucy coming on. We yeah, did. No, yeah, no Sir Pounds. No, sir, no. Feel also, bad we didn't uh, answer every question, whiskers. but some I just am like, I don't know. Hit us up on the subreddit. We'll answer yeah, them there. Yeah, if you have more questions. Reddit.com slash r slash practical folks. If you still need to buy the books or get the audio book. Ooh, Marjorie oh, chapters Marjorie would chapter. be cool. Oh, Marjorie chapter. Oh, Elena. Oh, oh, we, don't, we don't get those. Sorry. 
Uh, Mari so in, yeah. in the description of our video right here that you're watching are links to purchase the books on Amazon. Uh, they'll give us a small kickback. Also, if you prefer the audio book, which Chelsea is doing and Joel did auto, all good. of, mm -hmm. uh, there's a link to an Audible subscription that will give us 15 flat dollars, which is yeah, awesome. Yeah, you get a free trial. You get a free uh, audio book, which you can use to get a Game of Thrones. Or, or if Clash. you're already through it, Clash of Kings. Yeah, that'd mm -hmm. be good. And uh, that's really cool there. What else What else we got? We have a Patreon. Patreon, please, guys. Uh, the Patreon is the best way to support us. If yes. you already have the books, if you want to make a small contribution, a very easy contribution to our channel, all of this stuff that, makes, uh, that we make book club with, or we made Game of Thrones glue with yesterday, uh, is all recently acquired, all because of uh, you, because of viewers like you. Uh, for as little as $1 a month, $12 a year, you can be a patron to our channel and make a huge difference into the quality of our videos. And the different level of donations get different rewards. Yeah, yeah so. stuff that we make for patrons. Yes, I have... Special videos. I have a, a few yeah, behind-the-scenes videos that I need to edit. But at a certain point, you get access to special behind-the-scenes videos. You get Early releases. Early videos uh, that are not live uh, yeah. a day early and uh, very cool other stuff. So check that out. Mm. Um, also, yesterday we did Game of Thrones Clue. If you didn't catch that live stream, yeah. it's live on our channel. So mm -hmm. you can check it out. Check it out. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. MC Joel. James is great. <laughs> Chelsea uh, is very, very good. Oh, my new Cersei dress is coming along. I kind of... Uh, changed plans a tiny bit. I was gonna do the one for the end with the shoulder armor, and then I realized I would rather do the one with that she's wearing when the sept blows up. Whoa. It's all like the embroidery. Oh, oh yeah, like we uh. all don't know. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> like I said earlier, we all know this shit. <laughs> but um, so I'm working on the embroidery uh, for that right now. Oh, thanks for joining us, Sword in the Darkness. I like your name. Yeah. Oh, uh, we want to ask people to make stuff for us. Oh, what stuff? What did you you said something earlier? You wanted somebody to oh, make little finger bug. Oh, make yeah. a little finger bug. Oh, yeah. Are somebody... we gonna be in New York? I'll be in New York in October, but I don't know how much free time I'm gonna have because I'm gonna be working. Yeah. Yeah. We no plans right now. Yeah. Well, Someday. You know, the East Coast is a long way away. Yeah, it's yeah. very expensive. Yeah. yeah. And we have some fucking wedding we've got to get to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. So. Oh, thanks. Thank you. For, yeah, thanks, thanks Ariana. Ariana. anybody Anyone who uh, it's their first, first time. chat. Joel, do you want to plug anything? Ooh, no, not nope. yet. No, nope. oh, okay. okay. I don't want to plug that yet. Okay. All right. Something. Something. All right. Something. Cool. Well, uh, again, uh, thanks for a successful book club, everybody. Yeah. Uh, oh, until next time. I'm James. I'm James. I'm Chelsea. I'm Joel. And this is. What's in the book? What's in the book? Oh, What's in the books? That's not books? better. What is called? What's now our books? read has ended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's in these books? <laughs> I like and an now our, our read has ended. Is that a thing? Well, it's only a thing in A Dance of Dragons when Jojen dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. And on that note. <laughs> oh, I just got that. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.